Good, Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to thank evening. you for joining us this evening. Today is the 4th of December already. Wow. Um, and I would like to start tonight's meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee by everybody rising and pledging allegiance to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As we usually do, I'm going to go around the table and um, have everyone introduce themselves. And um, Jerry? Yep, yeah, Jerry's an here. How are you? Joe Grzybowski. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Jim Waddell. Mike Pierce. Brian Lapham. Joan Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Plouffe. Stephen LeBranche. Bob Ladd. Jones. Richard Renier. Glenn Farrell. Jim O'Loughlin. David Lee. Jamie Ayotte. Bill Kennedy. And Jamie, if you would just give us your official title right now. I know we are. Yes, ma'am. I'm Deputy Fire Chief, and this is Captain Bill Kennedy, who's sitting here with me. We're in the acting position of Chief and Deputy Chief, and we're here to present the 2015 operating budget for Hampton Fire Rescue. Thank you very much. Thank you. As everyone knows by now, we've sent out questionnaires to the department heads, and we've asked them to come prepared as we go section by section. We have to be a little gentle tonight. This is Chief. This is I uh, Jamie's fine. Right. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. I want to make sure I get this right for the moment. Acting Chief. That's right. Acting <laughs> Chief. I uh, <coughs> first appearance. Uh, he's been here before, but he hasn't presented before, so it's a little new to him to have to lead out with this. It is, and ma'am, uh, as I've been watching the budget committee meetings, I've noticed that you've had a small tickle in your throat, and I apologize tonight. I have the same, so I'll be drinking water as we go and coughing. I do apologize for that. And we've only been together on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Did you prove that? <laughs> I don't have. To. Page 67. And Jim, you want. Uh, yeah, we're starting on 69. That's the. Uh, Subtotal, I move uh, 361,130. Second. So we are going to lead out with administration. And do you have a copy of the questions? I do have a copy of the questions, yes, ma'am. Um, there is, uh, under administration, just to, Mr. Bottle, you had talked about that on page 69. On page 67, we also have a question from Mr. Zanoy regarding the 1.69. Yes. yes. Right. If I could just answer that, and then we'll certainly move on to that. Mm -hmm. um, sir, all of the questions that are in this budget um, questionnaire that you've given me regarding any type of raises are yeah. all collective bargaining. Okay. All of them. Gotcha. That's good. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> sir? No, I just move it, the okay. number, and then you... We'll let you talk. You Once you've answered those questions, yes, um, we'll just let you go on to the everything in that section, anything that you want to discuss with us that's gone up or down um, that would have to do with administration at this point in time. Okay. Notice there's a bump in supplies and printing. Um. There are, and that comes at, at um, on two phases. One, the increased cost in toner and paper certainly have, they've increased over the last three years. Uh, additionally, the maintenance costs on the copier machine that we have uh, have gone up considerably. Our copier is a little over six years old right now. We've priced out the, the lease of another copier to, you know, um, give out the needs of the fire department. Uh, it's annualized at about $2,200 a year for a lease for five years. So that's where the additional money is coming in right now. The 7155 that you see in that line item is based on a 2010 measurement. That's when that line item was actually funded at that level. Uh, since then, our copier, our, this line item, and our copying, I should say, purchases supplies. We've also incorporated fire prevention supplies. So all of the toner for their cartridges and things is now coming out of this line item, which has given it a, a rise. But then the additional $2,000 is for the new copier that we're looking to lease going forward. Okay. Uh, beginning in two uh, 2015. That's correct. Yeah. Now, with the lease of the new copier, will that include the toner and 
there's a price per copy. Uh, it's a it's more of a rental uh, style uh, arrangement. The problem being that the purchase it would before we could actually pay it off. If we paid it off up front, that would be one thing. Um, before we would actually pay it off, it would be it would already be obsolete. We're looking at a five year turnaround on copiers. So by the time we were looking, now we're seven years, almost seven years on this one. Um, we would get to the point where it would be old quick before we could we could do that. This under the lease agreement, they would have the opportunity to come back service it and do all that's needed for the life of the, the agreement so is it twenty two hundred dollars a year lease correct and what are we paying now uh right now we own the copier and we're paying maintenance i don't have a cost in front of me on that so we own it so yeah okay, so it's frequently going down we've had it serviced quite a bit i, I didn't bring those figures and i do apologize twenty two hundred dollars is like an extra amount of money then <coughs> so that I, I know where i am we have a lease that includes the tone okay so it, it, it very well may. I didn't per negotiate copy. it. Yep, okay. per copy, right. Does the $2,200 a year include maintenance? Uh, yes, I believe it does. It does? Yep. Mm. Yeah, I think with, with where the copy is concerned, I think that there is definitely an advantage. There were three options the on the table. This was the most feasible. Rentals yeah. Over purchasing it. Yep. Um, okay, I'm sorry to interrupt that. No, I, I apologize. Okay. That ends that section, Madam Chairman. I, uh, yeah. Anybody else got anything in there? I only, you know, saw what I saw. I mean, that was a good warm up. Um, yeah. Traditionally, right. we go around the yes, table after the questions and after your presentation on a section, and anyone who has a question has the opportunity then to ask it. Jerry, I know you're done, Joe. I'm done. On that what's, section. What's the uh, U UPS shipping? But what are you shipping UPS? We ship a lot of items from the fire department to get service. Um, Your equipment. Equipment, absolutely. We just recently shipped a thermal imaging camera, that's, things like that. That's done. That's okay. That? And oh. <coughs> oh, okay. UPS equipment. Got a question on UPS fire shipping. inspection. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who's representing the fire department and the planning board and who's doing the inspections? How's it doing? Um, mm -hmm. That's not the central. That's not the central. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Where's you 20.1? They've escaped the uh, area. Yeah. They've asked that we wait on that one, sir. Uh, we're, I'm sorry, that's in a different section. They've asked that we wait on that oh, one. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sonny. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm looking at uh, 42.22.141 on page 69, and it says um, we got a 16% increase in overtime wages and fire suppression, and I can't see how you. Um, we're not there, Mike. Yeah, that's the yet. next section. Yeah, I'm, I'm not off one, too? No, 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 you're off. You're off. It's you're in Mike. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, I have none on this section. You guys are just oh. chomping at the door tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I talk fast if you want. We can go faster. Uh, I'll wait. I'm not saying I'm an auctioneer, but. <laughs> Administration. Is okay, on. I'll take a shot. Um, could you just explain the longevity of the secretary? I can. Uh, in 2015, she will be reaching her 10 years. Um, that is a longevity step that uh, affords her $100 for the year. So that that's where that accounts for. I know it's 20%. Um, that's that's the longevity step is $100 for the year. So she's been here 10 years in 2015. It's a contractual agreement. $100 per year in 10 years. That's her step. That's the longevity payment, oh, one-time okay. payment. Okay. okay. I still don't quite understand that. But anyway, it's uh, nothing we can discuss anyway. anyway. Um, under leased. Why wouldn't the copier be under leased? Um, That's a good question. It is a good mm -hmm. question. Now, this when we um, built this budget, the intention was we had three options on the table for the copying and all of the equipment that was going along with it. Um, this one came from Light Island because we're using it under the same equipment base. So we have, generally speaking, if we're using leases, typically we're using we're looking at vehicles, and we're not doing that in this this manner tonight. You know, as far as lease vehicles, so. Should it be moved, though? It yeah. is a good question. I, I, mean, I can certainly take that under advisement. Does it really belong? You know, it, sure. It, it, it makes sense that he suggests that. I don't know how Christy feels about it, but it is leased equipment. That's what that line is, item sir. says, you know. Okay. Okay.
I only have one question going back to the copies again. In the copies that are made, is, is this for fire inspections, etc.? This is for, I yes. Mean, it's for everything. It's for, for everything, reporting absolutely. Reporting and standard operating anything procedures. Anything going to a user end, in other words, to an individual, and are we charging for that? We are not. Um, when it comes to that, most of it is internal. Uh, when it comes to permits for fire inspection, for permits of assembly, then they're charged a fee for the permit. So that is taken out of that. Um, we are now using a special paper so that it, it's similar to uh, if you've received a payroll check, you can't take a photocopy of it. There's a void in the background. So we're, we're purchasing special paper. Part of the permit fee would go to pay for that. It goes into the general fund in this case, but that's where that's the only one that I see that goes out as far as uh, outside of the department. Okay. Most of it stays with So them. now we're using special paper. It's costing us more. Have we passed that cost on? We have not. Was still fees still the same? And this is not, we've brought this up in other sure. departments, and I just think across the board, there, it's a small item, but it's, it's stuff that is moving in every department. These costs are going up. I see nothing wrong with the end user getting the fee increased to them to help defray some of this, because when you put all of the departments together, it adds up. Yeah. Mike? Well said. I'm all set, thank you. All set. Tim? Um, the uh, account on page 67, which is suffixed uh, 195. Yes, sir. Um, now, I have a copy of the spreadsheet, thanks to Mr. Pierce, paying $25 to get his hands on it. He did share it with me, and I'm looking at that. And that line item is labeled career incentives on the spreadsheet which is what the selectman approved, yet here it says longevity. Uh, it's the same account number, same numbers. But I heard you s you speaking to Brian, and this was a secretary's position. You said something about a contract. Am I longevity stuff. Right. right. And to my understanding that the uh, that this is a contractor, not an employee, the secretary? No, no she's a, she's a full-time employee. She's 35 hours a week. She's been there 10 years, come 2015. So part of the contract, she receives a longevity step. So, so we have a contract with an employee, a part-time employee? She's part of the collective bargaining agreement. She's part of the union? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Chief, when I look at this budget, if I recall in the past, we had a whole se other section for emergency services, uh, the ambulance and, and all that. Has it been combined in all of this now? No, oh, that's it. Uh, and we used to have like two two portions. One was fire department, and then the well, other one was emergency all services. Oh, EMS. Yeah, it, it, you had yeah, it the whole right. EMS section. What's well, it is? It's, it's in here, but it's just not divided out like that. All right, so it's combined within this. It has not been separated like we used to have. No, we haven't lost it and given it to another town, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 we've tried. We've tried. <laughs> All right, I, I just thought that, you know, uh, there was a lot of detail for emergency mm -hmm. services we'll that we used to review. Yeah. I understand. And, but now it's all in the same, right? <coughs> I guess maybe just one general question, uh, Madam Chairman, through you. I ask one question of the finance director. Certainly. Does it have to do with the administration? Uh, and no, it has to do with just with the bottom line of the whole department. One question, that's all I ask. All right, Bruce. <laughs> it's easy to ask. At what point, uh, at what percentage are we now as far as the bottom line figure for the fire department. Are you uh, able to tell me that now? As of the end of November, I don't have those numbers No, yet. say at the end of... The last I had is the October reports that you guys all received. Right, but I, I'm sorry, I just don't have that in front of me. That's why I'm I asking. do, sir. Yeah. So you would like to know what percentage fire was at at the end of October? Yes. Seventy-seven point four eight percent. Seventy-seven point eight percent. Seventy-seven point four eight. At the end of October. Right. All right. That's all. Right? That's all. I have. Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All set. Thanks. Okay. Sir. All set. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. So that being said, we have a motion on the floor, and it was seconded by who? Mike. Mike. Mm -hmm. Seconded. All those in favor. Opposed? None. Stain? None. Okay. Moving on to the next section. Okay. Fire suppression on page 73. 
I move two million five hundred and fifteen thousand eight hundred eighty five dollars. Second. You're doing good tonight, John. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and on the questions there, we'll turn it back. Yes, ma'am. As indicated before, the 2.27% is part of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, the overtime wages, and I know that Mr. Zunoy had requested the information regarding 16.04. Um, this is a, uh, a projected budget that's based on two years ago for default, and the collective bargaining agreement and the increase that have gone along with that and the associated costs with overtime over the past two years are projected out for this, um, for this particular line item. Um, there have been step increases. We have had firefighters who have been on the line now for two and a half to three years. They've received a step increase. So these projected numbers for that overtime for the 16.04% have risen as a result of the collective bargaining agreement adjustments that have come along with their wages. At the end of October, though, if you take the end of October and you annualize it out, 75K is what you spent in 014. I don't know what November says, but this was October. Right. And 5K, and you're asking, uh, what, what are you asking for there? Uh, you're asking for uh, 132,000. 132, you've never been you've never anywhere near there. Well, I can tell you that um, we, we have built in for the rest of the year um, the remainder of the budget needs to have a cushion because we have no way to project out what might occur. Hampton Beach historically has had, unfortunately, a great deal of fire. And one residential fire, a small structure fire um, in a normal one family home could cost up to $8,000 in overtime for the fire department for that one fire. Um, quick research today indicated that the Surf Motel, the A Block fire in 2010, cost a little bit, it was just shy of $20,000 for that one fire in overtime alone. So one fire in the next four weeks is certainly feasible, unfortunately. Um, we certainly hope that they never happen. But if they did, we would already be encumbered with that much money. I hear, I hear so. you, but in 011 you spent 114. I don't know about 010, I don't go back to 010. But your last three years, 11, 12, and 13, you right. averaged about 100,000. We did. And this year, 75K annualized from October. So based on those figures, uh, I think you're high. That's my opinion. I think you could. Thank you, sir. Looks like a uh, 15K reduction would be fine for you there, as far as I'm concerned. Thank I don't you. make the final ruling. <coughs> Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Moving on. Yes. The second question he had there, the OT, we all set on that. I believe that. Uh, do you have any further questions on the overtime, sir? No. Okay. Uh, mm. Did I know workers' compensation coverage is in there? Yeah. How is that? How, can I, can that. that be explained? Fred? Whatever. Somebody's got to cover for the people out of work as comp. It's going to be on overtime. Right. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, now I understand. Same for training. Mm -hmm. um, so people are out. Fourth of July. Yeah. Fourth of July, you have a lot of extra people in for that particular okay. time. That's all on overtime. Uh, if you have severe storms, we have to call extra people and have them available in the station so we can respond. Okay. I, I just didn't understand if that was a misplaced word choice. Workers' comp. No. Doesn't normally, one doesn't normally think of that. Uh, all the time. It's coverage. Yeah. I get it. Okay. All right. Going around with questions then, Joe. Uh, did he finish? I don't know. I, I, no. I kind of agree with Jerry. I mean, with. Well, we're not done with. We're no, we're not. Uh, no, right. well, I'm sorry. I just asked if we were done. No. No. Okay. I, all right. I, I agree I with Jerry. Back. Just with with today's technology and the inspections, specifically down the beach. I mean, you know, um, to me that seems kind of high. You know, we have sprinkler systems. Uh, you know, <clears throat> remote monitoring systems. I I kind of agree with Jerry. It, it, it does seem kind of high. And I, I appreciate what you're saying, and I completely understand it. However, we have had smoke detectors since, you know, a long time ago. We've had um, sprinkler systems in buildings as far as they can exist. But we also have a lot of construction that occurred long before the codes were enforced. And that still remains with us. We historically, in, we, we, um, we inherited that. 
So until those buildings are either torn down or burned down. Uh, so rental properties need to be brought up today. Uh, and we're trying, obviously. Everything can't be done in a day. So these properties still exist, so, and we're still protecting them. So who, to bring things up to date, who is, who is doing, who's, I guess my question is. What's the plan? Yeah, yeah. We see the building department, they have a part-time guy, mm -hmm. okay? He does, he does all the inspections, rental properties down the beach during summer, before the summer gets up. Sure. So how, how is the fire suppression, how are they doing the same thing as the building department does to make sure that... It's, it's two different entities, though. Um, I, you're, I, I you're understand. You're talking about inspection. Right. Proactive, and I completely understand that and appreciate it. But suppression, they're reactive. So they go out when they're called. If there's a fire, that's when they go put the fire out. They can't prevent the fires more than, you know, any police officer can prevent crime by saying, you know, we're going to no, I, I, do that. I understand that, but you, you have motels, you have sure. you have rental properties down there. Yeah. Okay. H how is that being proactive to make sure that we don't have those problems so we don't have an issue, you know, when we had A block going, mm -hmm. if the wind was blowing south, it would have took, I'm sure you will agree, it would have took a lot of beach out. Kept getting who's there. I know. I was down there when it happened. We were, we were lucky. Mm -hmm. Extremely. So, you know, the casino is a tinderbox, just waiting to happen. To sprinkle mm -hmm. a building, too. Right. To a point. Yep. Not 100%, to a point. Right. So how do we make sure that, that you know, I, do, I just, I don't, <clears throat> we need to be proactive down there. I understand. Um, with suppression, we are doing what we can. Um, the reason that the overtime is is there for this particular line item is for people to fight the fires, to do the calls. Mm -hmm. So in the fire prevention side of things, that's a different part of my budget here, um, that, that line item is different. Obviously. That'll be this the is, next section. Right. Yeah. This is for people who are going out to do the calls. When we do call back, okay. if they're coming in for the ambulance call back, whatever it might be. If we transport somebody to a hospital, mm -hmm. we call out, two people come returning back, take the second ambulance. Yeah, I got I get transported early this year, so I... Do we do okay? Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bumpy ride. We'll talk to DW. I will give you... Call. Yes, you were good on that. I will give that. Yes. I and I apologize, I flipped us out of this section onto the next stage, so I'm going to bring us back to the questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, where did we end? The overtime We're discussing yeah. overtime. We ended at overtime wages. Uh. Okay. I'm, I apologize. Okay. <coughs> so overtime now callback. Now, now we're on the callback. Right overtime callback. Zero percent increase, but four-year average spend rate was $15,465. 2014 annualized from October is actually 8060 Why asking 52394 Looks like $125,000 should be plenty. Looks like twenty five. Thank you. Yeah. Not one twenty five. <laughs> right. We can put that in there, so that would be good. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this covers cost of personnel as well. This is um, this is what we were just discussing, is it not? That says overtime callback. That's well, what line says. And that's what we were discussing. The 132 was my mistake. That's... Um, the, the increase over the two years before that in the budget is due to the step increases. I think I indicated that. This overtime callback is for the people who come back, the personnel who come back and do the calls. That's where their funding comes from. So that's where the line item comes to pay them when they do actually do the calls. I know. But even though you show a 0% increase, my point is the four-year average spend rate has been 15000 roughly. If you annualize from October... It's eight thousand for the year. So why are you up to fifty two k? We're again. We're just we're projecting out based on what we anticipate the need will be for the year. Looks like twenty five should be plenty, as far as I'm concerned. That's my position. Okay. Next. Go on with I've the questions. I've got a question. No, sure. Just, well, we're going to go. Wait, wait, we, wait. We're going to go around the table. I want to Afterwards. finish with the questions right. first. The questions. Okay. Protective clothing. Protective clothing is up 18.75%. Please in, uh, explain the increase and what drove it. Again, historical spend rates do not justify 2014 annualized from October is $12,044. Um, we are now entering a different time in the fire department. In 2009, I believe, Captain Kennedy, we had a grant that funded new equipment, new gear. Firefighters wear their gear 24-7, 365. So whether it's day, night, winter, rain, doesn't matter. If they're crawling through the mud, if they're in a basement, if they're in a fire, they're wearing this gear. You've seen them in it, right? Pants, boots, helmet, jacket, gloves, hoods. To outfit a firefighter right now costs approximately $3,000. Okay. 
the gear life, the shelf life of this gear is supposed to be 10 years. Based on storage, which we now have a great storage facility with our two new buildings, so it's out of UV light. But we, we lost two jackets to UV light alone. Um, based on tearing that might occur if you're cutting up a car, there's a lot of sharp edges. If you're in a structure fire and you get burned, the gear is no longer good. If you're exposed to diesel fuel, kerosene, or anything like that, it might be taken out of service. Our gear is coming up now to five, six years old, and we are starting to program or replace this stuff. Because if I wait, then I'm going to get to 2019 and need to replace the entire lot. At $3,000 a person, that's going to cost way too much. So my goal is to incorporate this for the next coming couple of years. I've already got a PO out right now for four sets. Next year, four sets. If I can continue down that path, then I'm going to replace all of my gear, and I won't do it all at once. So that's the goal there, and that's why the increase in that. While we're on this spot, yes, you have a PO out right now? For four sets under the line item that I already have in the budget. Under this year, under yep, 2014? I already have a quote. Yep. And the amount on that PO? Um, 10,000 and change. Uh, 10,006, I believe. Okay. And that's no helmets. So helmets are about $500 a piece. All right. So you're looking at about 10,000 10, this year, 10,000 next year. Right. Okay. Perhaps another looking at where we are when we end this year with any surplus that we have, possibly an area that could be considered. Well, if he's already got a, a PO cut for 10, why wouldn't that 19 become 10? Uh, because that's projected out for next year. There's next four year. sets. There's also new gear that needs to be purchased for any new hirees. As it stands, we hired three uh, two and a half years ago. I think to a man, all of them got used gear. How many times? Nobody got new you, gear. Do you have year. any I mean, I'm sure you do. But, I mean, you're not using this gear every day. You don't have fires every day. How many fires are you actually, you know, do you know how many fires you actually had to go fight this year, 2014? I do. Uh, okay. Well, we, we've had Where a people total, to gear up, full gear, blah, blah, They blah. have to gear up on every call because you never know what a real fire is. Yeah, all right. Okay. So the call comes in. Tonight, we just had an example. Um, the, the men were at a fire, uh, the firefighters were at a, a fire call out for a car that ran over a gasoline can in the Walgreens parking lot. While they were there, the fire alarm went off in the building. Strange. Um, it, just an unusual occurrence. They were there in full gear in a hazmat situation because it was a gasoline can that, that ran over. Mm -hmm. But then a fire alarm activated. They were in their gear. They leave the station in their gear. You've seen them get dressed. They get dressed and they go out in their gear. If they're going on a medical call, typically, especially the engine guys, they'll be in their gear because it's <clears throat> 13 degrees outside. That's a good, you know, it's a good jacket to wear for that. It's rough material. It takes a beating. If we're going to respond to a vehicle on the side of the road, if it's a motor vehicle accident or even if it's just a disabled motor vehicle and they're crawling around at night on the grass, there might be glass, whatever it might be. They're putting on their gear every day, all day, all night. And it's the same gear. This is, if you imagine you have a winter parker after five years, it gets a little old. They're crawling around in this. And at, to, to talk about fires, yeah, you know, they are down, and that's great. But one fire can eliminate an entire crew's gear immediately. Currently, most of them don't have a backup set. We have spare sets that are older, considerably older. Mm -hmm. But so, they don't I mean, have a. I, this, uh, this, uh, you're trying to <coughs> you're making up. You got a 10k PO in there now. Correct. The kind of makeup that's going on. Correct. Because we haven't purchased any yet, and I'm trying to get ahead of the curve because I want to. I want to front load that. Because of grants that have been previously received. That was in 2009. There was a grant. The entire department at one time, and now instead of getting to that point in three more years, where I have to do the entire department at one time again. I'd rather do it in pieces along the way so that everybody will be outfitted again with a new set of gear. Jerry, he's already 20, he's already overspent the line on it. Oh, he has? Mm -hmm. well, he's no. a, without, the, without the PO, he spent 11900 and he's got 10000 on top of that mm -hmm. on a $19,000 budget. Correct. He's already over the line on it. Yeah. Right. He's going to have to take some money out of your line item. So uh, <laughs> I, only I only have through October. You're talking about okay. October that you have. Well, if you if you look at that, September 30th, he'd spent $11,924 so far, just replacements during the year. Right. And he's asking for $10,000 for four units complete. Right. Okay? Yeah. He's, over the, he's over the $19,000. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, I, it was 12, through, through, through October, he spent $12,044. Right. So if he's got a PO in there for 10, you're over. You know, this gear is expensive. And when I first got hired here, uh, gear was about $2,000 to outfit a firefighter. It's gone up. It's almost $3,000 per firefighter now, and that's in three years. This gear is extremely durable, I can tell you that, and we do send it out frequently for repairs. 
We have a company that, that we buy it from. They do the repairs. It's a local agent. She's very quick about it. I can't say enough about Bergeron. They come in. They do what we need to do. They save us a ton of money in doing actual repairs to gear, and we do maintain them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's high-quality stuff that we're maintaining. All right, thanks. Moving on to the technical. next one. Technical, technical hazard, hazard expense. Technical hazards deals mostly with hazardous materials and all of the other accoutrements that go along with it, unknowns and various monitors. Um, foam, we purchase foam for the technical hazards. In here, you ask about the downgrade by 2%, and but it's budgeted for 20000 when the preceding years averaged 12735 and 2014 annualized from October is 14682 Please explain. Right. This year, we purchased foam. Foam, 28 buckets of foam, cost us $4,000. The foam that we use is F200, and what it does is it, it um, puts a coat over any type of vapors. Mm -hmm. It was just used in the parking lot at Walgreens that I was describing. Uh, if there's a fire, it's also a cooling agent, and it works tremendously well. It was used at the A Block fire. Um, this foam comes in five gallon pails, pour it into our truck, and it gets used up quite frequently. It's outstanding for vehicle fires, but it costs. So to purchase 20 um, five gallon pails, it costs us $4,000. We have a foam nozzle that's outstanding right now that we're waiting on a purchase of if we're able. Uh, so the number might not necessarily be accurately reflected at 14682 from October. We're still researching whether or not we're able to obtain it. Um, the monitors that we use for carbon monoxide, for hydrogen sulfide, they all take sensors which go bad after time. Um, they must be calibrated. They must be um, monitored. So in order to do that appropriately, this is the line item that funds that. <coughs> and then lastly, the new equipment. New equipment. Budgeted $0 in 2014, yet spent through October uh, 32532 Please explain. In addition, is the new equipment being requested new or replacement? If new, what is driving the request and the rationale, please? Uh, we did have a large jump there. And the, there were several items that went in before the Board of Selectmen, I do recall. I'll uh, refer to the town manager on that one. We also purchased two pieces of equipment that were necessary for the new building uh, that weren't part of building construction. So one of the line items that we have here, $11,000 a little over, was a new Polaris 6x6. If you've ever seen us on the beach, we're driving around in a 6x6, and we also have a 4x4 uh, ATV. And oh, hold on. What, yep. A Polaris? Polaris 6x6. <laughs> yep. What is that? A 6x6. It's a ATV that we're able to cut patients oh, off the beach. Yeah. It's built and designed, is so it SUV it's a mini ATV. bike. A ATV. <laughs> okay. All right. So that. What, what, what else besides the Polaris? A gear washer and a gear dryer, which totaled seventeen thousand dollars. One was, uh, one was seven thousand. One was nine. That wasn't part of the new building, huh? That one. Those two costs were not. I did. I did. I, I took a walk through. I did yep. see those. So. I know you guys wash yourself when you come back. We have to. Yeah. So that was a part of the original building. Huh? The no, the original no. cost was not. Nope. Yeah. Wouldn't be Joe, not a gear washer. Well, you know, it is. They are necessary. Yep, they're uh, for gear, different for uniforms. So oh. station uniforms, small I, I, dryer, yeah. right? So it was eleven thousand for the Polaris and another seventeen for the washer. And That's the dryer. correct. And then we also purchased two snow blowers to help us out with the aprons. <clears throat> what are you budgeting this year here? What's what's the, what's this all about for? Uh, she was 13k. Ice rescue. Equipment. That's new equipment, right? 79.50. Yeah, right. Yeah. The ice rescue equipment's well, been a request well, if for that several was new years. new equipment, why wasn't it in the new equipment line item? I'm sorry. What? If that yeah. was new equipment that you purchased, yeah. Why wasn't it in the? I guess it is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Good. It's okay. No, but I think the Polaris and what you were talking about was the 2000 in the 2014 budget. That's what it, that's the Polaris and the other. The money he's talking about was it was it's already been purchased in 2000. That was the 2014. He was asking me about that. Right. Okay. But now we have. I'm sorry. No. Nope. 79.50 in the 2015 budget. Mm -hmm. Right. For something else. Something Ice rescue. Different. Right. Correct. So it was what I was concerned about was the zero was budgeted in 014 in the new equipment. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, 32K has been spent. Yeah, I understand. So that's what I wanted to understand, because he then came in at 79.50. I'm going. Through How do you feel about 
<laughs> well, that's for something yeah, else. That's, that's for something new. Yeah. Well, well, you it's know what? The Polaris, the, it's ice equipment. That's right. And, and we have large bodies of water, and they freeze. Uh, we're in New England. And to get out on the ice appropriately, let's face it, we have Marine 1 and Marine 2, two beautiful vessels that do a tremendous job. We've made a lot of rescues this summer. Um, but when it comes to ice, to get the guys out there to do it appropriately, they need to have the proper equipment. This has been, I do believe that this has been several years, it's been put in the budget and removed. Yes. So. It's new equipment. It is new equipment. But what, uh, uh, you're talking about marine, I understand you're in the ocean, but you're saying ice rescue. What, sure. What ice? Ponds, I guess. Ponds. 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 Absolutely. Ponds. 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 Ponds and marshes. Okay. We have Taylor River. Freezes. We have Taylor River freezes. Yeah. yeah. We got Bassett Ponds with freezes. Right. And yeah. if it doesn't freeze all the way through, and we get kids to go out there. How we many times? Can't put how many times in January, February, it doesn't freeze through? I I live on Taylor River. I understand. And um, uh, this is new stuff. Is this is new? This is new. This new equipment. That's new equipment. To the I just, all right. I just I I don't agree with it. Okay. I, I just, well, well, I mean, it's, you know, are we done? Let's finish with the presentation. We're done here, yeah. Okay. All right. Jerry, we're going to give you a rest for a little while. Yep. Joe, do you have anything else other than not agreeing with that particular? As, anything yeah, else I, on I, any? I do not agree with the ice rescue. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> Sonny, on this section? Yeah. Uh, my question basically is statistics. How many false alarms did you have? How many caught the calls? How many at the beach? How many the rest of the town? That, that's an awful extensive you know, answer. I'm sorry, what? That's an awful extensive answer. If you'd like, I could certainly get you the information and the data. Yeah, I'd be curious. Sure, I could certainly do that. If you would like to send that to me, I will distribute it yes, to the entire committee. Off the top of your head, do you know if we had any ice rescues in last year? <coughs> I'm sorry, ma'am? Off the top of your head, do you know if we had any ice rescues in last um, year? In 2013-14, I don't recall any. And uh, reaching back in the hard drive there, I don't. I can't tell you honestly that I can. I can tell you uh, about the 2012-13 winter, but I do know that we've had two extremely late season water calls. Mm -hmm. Late season being like still winter, mm -hmm. um, and I do believe that was 2012-2013. Okay. So. Me. It doesn't. I'm going out of line here. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> Jim? <laughs> yeah, um, just I mean, you did a good job of telling the protective equipment and protective clothing and stuff and where has it broken down, which is good. And all that saves lives, right? Not only your no lives, question. but lives. <coughs> the the, the you firefighters' gear, are, it's dedicated to saving their lives. It's an absolutely mandatory piece of equipment. And without it, they would not be able to go in and rescue anybody, period. It's without question the most essential piece of equipment, so other than a trained firefighter. That's the most. So again, it's something that's expensive, extremely, but it's paying for itself completely. You know, the same thing is we have to make up our mind. <coughs> I think on the on the ice equipment, it's something that's expensive, but one life. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, I do. I'll ask my question now. I wanted to ask earlier on page sixty-nine. And the overtime wages again on fire suppression, the 132. There was a question asked you earlier about how many actual fire uh, fires we had in houses and buildings in the year uh, 2014, and you got off, we got off on a little tangent there. We did. We've had a total of nine residential fires in 2014 that amounted to a little over $25,000 worth of damage. Um, we've had 16 in other structures okay. this year. Um, we're looking at a total response for 2014, not including the two that they were on while I was listening on the way here, of a little over eight, 1,890 responses on the fire. So that could be vehicle fires, that could be uh, EMS calls that they're going on, that could be just regular residential um, calls, whether it's alarms in the home, that sort of thing. But actual fires, yeah. um, 9, 16, and total for all fires outside, including vehicles, uh, 41. We had other fires. Okay, so if you take the 9 and the 16, which are actual big building fires and uh, so forth, and you multiply that times, you said about $8,000 for an average fire? If we're dealing, yep. Okay. Just thinking out loud with that one. So you're saying... Now, that's a residential. That's a, that's a small cape. Let's call it a cape fire or a, a single-family ranch. 
if we're talking a large scale fire, mm -hmm. one of the motel schooner landing, something like that, where we've seen these historically, um, that that has already proven four years ago in 2010 dollars, it was uh, 19,000, almost 19,700 dollars. Yeah, but the beauty of that, uh, like uh, somebody said earlier, you have sprinklers, and I think Mr. Good, uh, Mr. Jabowski, however you say it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Accept my apology. Uh, yes, sir. Whatever it is. Uh, no disrespect. Um, everything is getting more and more smoke detectors and so on and so forth. Like, I'm just doing, redoing a house and we have to recheck everything. And you guys are part of that. And so is the building department. So I think buildings by default are safer. And being as we have quite a few new buildings going at the beach, I think that's eliminating some of the older structures that are there. So I'm... What I'm trying to say is this cost in terms of actual cause for actual fires is probably going down over the years because years ago there used to be fires and the ambulance thing was a second run. Now the ambulance calls probably take probably a, maybe 75 percent if not more. Yep. So I would think that I would support reducing that line considerably uh, down to the maybe the 115 or the 114 that was in the 14 budget. That would be more to my liking. So that's all I have to say about that, Madam Chairman. I'm all done. Thank you. Um, washing down the equipment. Do we need to get new washers? Just asking a general question. No, we. Uh, you're talking equipment, uh, like uh, apparatus. Yes. No. Uh, washing the uniforms. The gear. The gear. gear no, we have we have two extractors, one at headquarters and one at the beach station, and we have two dryers, mm -hmm. and both of them, the both dryers were purchased this year. One of the extractors was purchased before I was hired, and the other extractor we purchased this year. Mm -hmm. So, so you won't be adding any more, but they're not working for a while. okay. Mm -hmm. Years. Um. Um. <coughs> page seventy four. Four two two zero two one forty. Yes, sir. Seafood festival has been removed. Where is that now? Seafood festival has been removed. Would that be in the suppression? <laughs> that was over overtime wages. All right. Oh, fire prevention, isn't it? Fire prevention. Uh, no, we also have uh, staff that work in addition on the seafood festival weekend. Um, we build that back. So that money is recovered. Right. Excellent. No charge. <coughs> we charge for services on that. It goes to the general fund, however, it doesn't go back to the budget. <coughs> okay, so it gets, it gets paid out of your department, but goes back into the general fund. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Why doesn't it go back to. There's no mechanism for that, as I'm understanding, Mr. Wolf? There's, there's no a reimbursement. It's a revenue. Revenues and, and appropriations right. do not mix. Yeah. Which would help may perhaps in the future for that line, Christy, is to have <coughs> some notation in there that X amount of dollars was billed back and can be found in revenues, in the general revenue fund. <coughs> That's question. where I'm going. I hear that question quite a bit. That's where I'm going to the 213 budget, and it's in there, and that's why I was yeah. asking. Yeah. Well, some things have come in, come out. Right. It's changed. But. If it's a reimbursement, that's one thing. Well, it is, it, you'll see it in revenues, but to have at least a notation here, or, or actually across the board, any line item that comes out of one department and we don't see it <coughs> into that department, but we see it in revenues, that would be a nice, you don't have to do it this year, but going forward, it would it would be helpful to us. If Mary Weas could keep that in track, I'd appreciate it. That's it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got a, a few things here. Um, one thing, Michael, I want to speak to something <coughs> you brought up about fires seem to be going down. I think the control of fire speaks to a couple of things. <clears throat> I won't go in too much into detail on that until um, we get to the next section. One has to do with the inspections that are being done, bringing the codes up. That takes manpower by itself that's not reflected by the number of fires you have, um, probably by the fires that you don't have, but I'm going to park that there. The other part of that is that we are increasing the structures. 
Possibly. rapidly in this town. So we have the potential for fires in a lot of new places that didn't exist in the past. I'd like to keep an eye on there. Um, <coughs> My general, I've got a general sweeping question on OT as it affects this section and other sections. Are we seeing any of this OT as a result of the fact that you are terribly in demand? Certainly. Um, we would love to tell you that, no, we're all set. It's not the case. Obviously, we would love to have the appropriate staffing every day. Um, this year, our current staffing levels, we go to eight instead of nine. We have nine on duty. If somebody is out sick, our workers' comp, they go down to eight. Um, that is well below the suggested standards by NFPA, significantly almost half um, what the suggested standards are for NFPA. Yeah. Um, and I think when we do I call did this and looked at the study. It, it has to be. If you none of you can remember me saying this, that it's even longer than any of you were here. But when we looked at it, we were, we should have had 19 on. That's correct. Mm. Am I right? Absolutely. The memory still work. 19. We have eight. There's a big difference in there. Huge. And don't forget, we fought to get four people back not too long ago. So I'm sorry I jumped into no, that. No, that's but fine. To, to address something else, just, just so that, um, and, and Mr. Pierce, I completely understand that. Fires are going down, and that's a wonderful thing. To that end, where the new science that's coming out to indicate what's going on at fires is teaching us so much. The fires are going down in frequency. But the level of danger is rising exponentially because legacy construction and legacy furniture, what your grandmother had for a couch in your grandmother's, you know, balloon frame construction home, it was all nominal construction, nominal wood lumber, and it was horsehair plaster, things like that. Now we're in lightweight truss construction. We have Lazy Boy furniture that's got overstuffed pillows. The, um, the BTUs that are released by this furniture are causing backdrafts to occur at about the three-minute mark which is when fire departments are arriving. So our firefighters are entering this structure at backdraft time. The danger level has gone exponentially higher, insanely higher. You can't even believe it until you actually see the studies that have been performed. <coughs> so the, the frequency is going down, but the level of risk and danger has risen exponentially. And these are all going into the condos at the beach. Lightweight trust, absolutely. <coughs> Right. Yeah, Something else you should be aware of that <clears throat> when we were preparing this budget, one of the fire department's great concerns was they're getting a lot, they're getting very much behind in their training. Uh -huh. There's not been a lot of money for training in this budget, and if, uh, when Chris developed this, a large portion of this is for training to try to catch up with that training that all the other fire departments have. Uh -huh. So, and that requires overtime because these people have to go to someplace else to be trained. Yeah. And the only other thing before I continue going around the table is that when it comes to equipment, we have, as far as I'm concerned, the best in our fire and police that we could possibly ask for. Know these gentlemen, and I've seen them work. And if they had no equipment, they'd still come in and save you if you were the worst enemy <coughs> because that's how dedicated they are. While it is their job, if you want to look at it, to go out on these calls in fire or, or whatever brings us, drownings, call it, they go in not absorbing the risk to themselves to do their job. I think it is our job to make sure that whatever the equipment is, whatever the technology is, that we equip them to the best of our ability to go and do just that. I think that responsibility is on us. And as I look around this table, I know there are people on this table that have had emergencies. All right. <coughs> I know half of you have been carted off to the hospital probably at some point in time and it's gone through our and you've got a first hand <laughs> yeah you know you okay? we, we can sit yes. here and we can say we know how you guys operate all right i had a fire in my house that should have taken my entire house down instead it only um gave my daughter minimal burns and blew out a window a few more minutes i would have lost my entire house that has to do with response time. So I, for one, appreciate it. And that happened 
15 years ago. You guys have only gotten better since then. And I thank you for it and never take it for granted. And I hope as you sit here and nickel and dime this equipment, which in the context of a $27 million budget is peanuts, I just want you to think about being on the other end. They don't get to call, talk to the person and say, well, look, do you think I need uh, this outfit or that outfit? They're going to show up fully dressed, all right, and ready and prepared because not only while they're on that call, <coughs> they may be called to something else while they're there. Keep that all in mind, and I know I'm long-winded, but when it comes to this, I care more about their safety because they've got our safety 24 and 7. All right, so I'm going to pass it on to Mike. I'm all set. All right. Um, a couple of things. Going back to new equipment. <laughs> so we have ice rescue kits, ice rescue sled, ice rescue reach pole system. <coughs> so you don't have this equipment now? No, sir. No. Good Lord. <laughs> you should. Yes, sir. I can't believe you don't have it because we do have pawns in this and, and ice and situations. And if, a, if somebody falls through, as a matter of fact, if a dog falls through, they end up going to rescue the dog. So one other thing I wanted <laughs> to mention is that um, just so that nobody forgets, regular wages, call back over time. There are three firemen at the beach station. When they go out on a call, there's nobody else there. Okay. The, the SOP is that when the ambulance goes out, the engine goes as well. First okay. response, right. Um, at the uptown station, there are five people there 24 hours a day. If the ambulance goes out, there go two of them. If the engine goes out, that's the other three. And at that point, you have to call in another crew right. to another three people. Immediately have to go to the station and be prepared in case they have to take another piece of equipment out. So that's how it works. There aren't six or ten people at the fire station playing pool all day. Now, but there, you also have mutual aid, too. We have mm -hmm. mutual aid, but that goes both ways. It does. I'm just that saying. It goes both you, ways. Trying you know? to pigeonhole this, that's... Okay. When everybody's out, we have nobody in town. We do. Oh, we no, no, no. Aid. No, no. We have mutual aid, but they also call, call because they may need another engine. Or they may need the ladder truck. Right. You know, so pretty minimal. Running pretty close to the bone. No, the engine's running too. I don't, think any, I don't think any town is probably overspending on when it comes to fire departments and things. No, so. who's got you back? Well, that's why you have mutual aid, okay? Who's got your back? When we had that A block fire, the fire trucks from Laconia were coming down. That's true. Okay, in Northfield. Uh, so and, and as Captain Kennedy kind of indicated, he kicked me under the table, just so that we're all clear. That was a sprinkler building, correct, Captain? Yeah. That was a sprinkler building. Mm -hmm. That to the, the surf motel was a sprinkler building. So even in sprinkler buildings, <coughs> we can have big fires. Right. Mrs. Mitchell's was also sprinkled, and so was the Happy Hampton, but they burned and, and Mrs. Mitchell's was a, a cinder block construction and of course at a certain temperature cinder blocks just explode yep. so did they, have, did they have a fire pump I can't answer that I wasn't working here at the time okay. anyway thank you very much thank you sir I kind of have a follow up to Steve's comment I just can't believe we can't come up with a better solution than sending two firefighters and a pumper truck on every ambulance call. Mm -hmm. I realize you may need more than the people in the ambulance to lift the patient. But my grandson goes to school at the University of Massachusetts. They have a compact with the town of Amherst, and they train multiple students as volunteer firefighters. And it seems to me mm -hmm. something like that, if nothing else, can you consider engaging some of the young guys in the town to support the ambulance call just for the lifting. And, and I understand that. Um, he, uh, UMass, you know, uh, go men and men, um, they have something that we don't have, and that's a depth. Um, they have live-in campus with students in their dorms, in their classes. Uh, my wife's a Hokie, so she's gone to Virginia Tech, where they have an absolutely outstanding design for using students as part of their EMS team. Um, they'll be in class. They'll have a radio. If there's a call out, they leave class. They'll take their radio and they'll go and respond to the call. 
in town here, there's no mechanism, there's no depth, there's no field that I can go and reach that many people and say, hey, why don't you come over and work for us? In our lifestyle, where we're working now doing EMS and fire, we're cross-trained. So all firefighters are trained in EMS to different varying levels, and all of our EMS personnel are obviously firefighters. To that end, to equip and train them, uh, I was requested by one of the selectmen to come up with a cost on that. Um, to get Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, and, and now AEMT, <coughs> which is Advanced EMT status, uh, it's going to cost about $14,000 per person. That's just training and then gear. So when you imagine the cost of $14,000 per person, if we had a staff that we were able to call in when we needed like that, they would all need to be outfitted in gear, they would all need to be equally trained so they were able to do it. The reason that we send an engine out with those three firefighters is because they need to go help. If you saw the equipment that we carry, the bags are about 40 pounds a piece. The stair chair weighs about 28 pounds. We've got an oxygen bottle, which is made of aluminum now, which is really wonderful, but um, it still weighs about 22 pounds. When we're carrying the patient, uh, anywhere from 100 to keep going, CDC tells us that obesity is on the rise, and we can see it in our patients. So we see that level. If we're carrying down a 400-pound person from a second floor, we need assistance. Those firefighters that are arriving in that engine are in a mobile office. At that point, it may be a fire suppression vehicle, but it's just a mobile office. It's a vehicle to get them there, and from the next call, as we saw at Walgreens tonight, their next call might be a fire. So they just respond from their location, and they go to it, they're there. I just think something could be done to solve the problem of lifting the patient mm -hmm. in a more efficient way than sending the firefighter in a pump -a truck to help lift. Many towns that I've lived in mm -hmm. send the ambulance. They don't send a fire truck yeah. to support the ambulance. Uh, granted, we don't have a college in the town, but it seems we have young people in the town. Many of which might have some interest in volunteering if you could set up a program to help support the need to lift people. It's just a thought. Thank you, sir. Tim? No question. But I've always understood that the philosophy behind sending the, the truck is manpower, not necessarily. I mean, the idea being that if there's another call, or if there's a fire call while you're out on an ambulance call, you've got personnel right there, and away they go. That's Rather, it. So I think that's the philosophy behind that's exactly it, the philosophy. Have <coughs> both respond. That's true. Uh, in the first responder category, though, as Mr. LeBranch pointed out, at the beach, we don't have an ambulance station there. So if somebody calls on G Street, and <coughs> yesterday in particular, I know that uh, Chief Sawyer indicated that there's a huge heroin problem in town. Um, I'm here to tell you that yesterday alone, our guys responded to three heroin overdoses. So, you know, that's just yesterday. In that capacity, our engine responded to G Street and assisted the patient. The ambulance came from uptown, arrived. They were given a report, this is what you're going to need. They had already started an initial care. Once the ambulance got there, transferred the patient to the ambulance, brought the patient to the hospital, the engine's back in service immediately. Right. And if it's needed, it's right there. It's ready to go. <clears throat> Under our new equipment, back to the ice rescue. Sir. Uh, <clears throat> you're saying that we, we have not had any program in the past for this particular I can't phase answer. of your operation. Or, or sure. Right now. I can't answer historically, perhaps Captain Kennedy could give a better answer on that. Historically, I can't speak. In the last two and a half years, we've had no equipment, no training, and no, uh, really nobody who's capable of doing this. We would do the best we could using techniques from swift water rescue, open water rescue, because that's similar, but breaking through ice becomes extremely dangerous extremely quick. So is there a training program they're going to be set up <coughs> through? Through the New Hampshire Fire Academy. <coughs> uh, the equipment, the uh, the wetsuits and the scuba gear, gear that you have for summer use, sure, adaptable to this type of. Um, I don't believe that they are. Uh, typically speaking, they are designed for a flotation device. Um, ice rescue gear is usually got a different hide on it, so it's able to go over ice and deal with the. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the equipment, the, the wetsuits. And no, the we wouldn't be in that. We would be purchasing new new equipment for that. Oh. So it's a it's a new different type of suit. All right, because you we're just looking for kits, sled, and a pole, but no the kits, the kits that that encompasses. Is the kits the scuba or the the wetsuits and that? All right, okay. So I, you know, I have to agree with uh, Mr. Wardell that, you know, I look at this as a potential life-saving program. No question. You know, maybe we don't have it right now, but for the sake of 
$7,900. I'd hate like hell to know that we didn't have this program in place when we needed it. So that's just my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn? Um, as far as the ice rescue goes, I note that a lot of cities and towns, especially in snow rescue, are going to the plan of billing the dumb people who are out <laughs> on the mountains <laughs> walking around. Mm -hmm. And I just suggest a similar sort of um, program for the town of Hampton. If we have to expend tremendous amounts of money, I agree you need this. Uh, bill it to the people who are falling into the situation. And as far as the overtime wages, it seems the town of Exeter, it works fairly well. I know I would volunteer for lifting patients in ambulances if there was a program in Hampton um, that allowed for that sort of thing. I think other people would too. All set. Thank you. Um, just a couple of comments, really. With all due respect, um, if I call 911, I, I want to see you guys come. I don't want to see someone who thinks they'd like to play fireman for a day show up at my door to either uh, bring me to the hospital or fight a fire. So I'll leave the decisions I up hope to you. Don't you. Have to. Thank you very much. I'll leave the decisions up to you guys, and I, I want to see the real guys show up. Um, just getting back to the other, th um, the turnout gear, I, I, the last thing we should be talking about is skimping on that. That's, uh, I think it's crazy to even discuss it um, personally. Um, but I think it's a great idea what, what you're doing by <coughs> being proactive and trying to buy three a year over the next, so, so you, you're putting the turnout gear on a, on a revolving basis. Um, and I think, that, I think that's good planning, I think it's a good idea. Uh, it's a, the, the budget takes a smaller hit. You continually have uh, upgraded firefighters in there, and, and the gear is good. So I, I, I think it's all good myself. That's all I have. Madam Chair, um, you had mentioned oh, how much sorry. we appreciate what the fire department does. I want to preface my comments by stating that in no way do I want to reduce the overall budget to a fire department. I just want to make sure that the money we are spending is spent appropriately and efficiently. Um, Last year, this is before your time, but last year we got into some of the conversation about overtime. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that in the fire department, you cannot block off certain weeks and say only X number of firefighters can be off on Christmas week or the 4th of July. Is that still the case? Contractual obligation. <coughs> right. That that's falls under contract and negotiated. And I know you can't control that. Right. But in private industry, you can say on this particular week only X number of people can be out. And I'm wondering <coughs> what percentage of the overtime is the result of that flaw, what I consider a flaw, in not being able to schedule your workforce across the whole year? And is there anything we can do to make the, the vacation time more efficiently handled? I believe last year um, your predecessor said that if every single fireman wants to take a vacation on a particular week, we have to give it to them. <coughs> is, is that the case? Um, I'm, I'm I've never seen that happen, though. No. In 30 years, I've never seen that happen. Can, can you give me a, an idea of what percentage of your overtime is a result of vacations not being scheduled the way you'd like them to? Uh, I can research that and get it back to you if that's all right, because I don't have the figures in front of me on that. And again, I'm not trying to, to lower the overall budget. I'm simply saying, could we save on some of that overtime? Because I agree, with, with overtime that high, maybe we should be considering adding another body to their force, which will help reduce overtime or manage <coughs> vacation schedules more efficiently. I just throw that out. Um, and I, I know that's not under your control. It's a bargain for it. Having done a lot of scheduling, if you have someone who's entitled to X amount of weeks, no matter where you put it, it's not like a, in, a, in this situation a full-timer could take the place or cover partially, Dave. You have to replace that individual. So no matter where you put that schedule, you're still going to eat that time up. I don't know if I'm explaining it clearly. There are some jobs that if you're out 
I might have to assume some of your duties. It doesn't change my 40 hour week. Just means that while you're gone, I assume a few more things to do. In this situation, you have to replace that individual. Again, but I, I understand that. But if, if you're allowing as many people to be off, even though there are certain premium weeks that more pe Thanksgiving, holiday weeks, Fourth of July, Labor Day, um, Memorial Day, if you allow as many firemen to be off as as they want to be off, you've got. I assume you have to bring in people from somewhere else and pay them at a premium wage. No, How do you we work it? on four groups. So we have group one, two, three, and four. If all of Group 4 working today decided they wanted to go on vacation tomorrow, and that's their day, and they're all going to take it, we have three other groups to draw from. That's where the overtime cost comes in, because they'll come in and they'll fill that shift. So they may be going to see the mouse, you know, spending some time in Disney, but somebody else from our department is filling that role the next day. But on an overtime basis. Correct. No different than if somebody was sick or if somebody was out workers' comp. <coughs> That's where cross training is really helped yeah. out. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's where cross training is really helped out. I think because everyone is able to fill in the role. Fill in the Absolutely. Role. <coughs> yeah. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then can I follow up on one remark, Mr. Ladman, just real quick? Sure. He mentioned something about taking the pumper trunk out on the ambulance calls, and that's been one of my concerns for quite some time. <laughs> Because at a cost of somewhere between five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars for a pumper trunk, if you take it out on every call we have in this town, it's going to get the devil beat out of it with the wonderful roads we have. So it's just beating it to pieces. So it's something we ought to really look at and consider very carefully how we respond to emergency calls with the ambulance. I agree with Mr. Ladd's remark that we've got to look at that closer. There's got to be a better solution, not only the manpower, but the equipment too. We're beating pumper trucks up and they're twice as expensive, maybe three times as expensive as an ambulance. Maybe we could fix the roads. That's also true. <laughs> but that still wouldn't but it, it increase the mileage you're putting on pumper trucks. So. Joe, I know you had your hand up as we went around the entire time. Can I ask a question? We keep bringing up pumper trucks going on an ambulance call. Is it true it's a fire engine that goes out on an ambulance calls? The pumper truck goes only out on the west side of town because there's no fire hydrants, correct? No, you're thinking of a tanker. Okay. Uh, a oh, fire engine, fire pumper okay. are the same. Okay. Actually, we have a warrant article okay. hoping for a new one. Yes. That's <laughs> what, to me, was it seemed kind of confusing. Okay. Yeah, that's, nope. That's the reason I'm asking. An engine, a pumper, they're all the same. If we're talking about a tanker, that's a vessel that has 3,000 gallons. Right. So it goes to yep. the west side of town because there's no we fire don't have hydrants. One. We don't have a tanker. Uh, Camp Falls thing. comes in, right? Yep, but that's mutual aid. Right. Okay. Let's say one more thing. Well, I've let them, so I might as well let you. I All just, right. If I, we could just wrap it I'm up, just though, after real these quick, two. Real quick. I was on an ambulance service for eight years, and at that time, they didn't send the fire truck with the ambulance. Okay. And I can tell you, from firsthand experience, I wish we had the pump, the truck there. Believe me many many times okay i've done it so they take it they take they want to have that truck with the additional help because of the manpower steve okay is it a manpower mm -hmm. yeah exactly okay so but there are alternates yeah I've heard uh, and, and Richard, well equipped it, suv for example one more one more here and then we're going to wrap but this but is it their equipment on the fire truck that yes. may be needed that cannot be carried in the in the ambulance oh well n without question it has emergency medical equipment on it right so they can begin treatment however when that emergency medical response is done they're a fire engine they're able to go pump out a well, fire that's what I say, if they go say for a car accident that's right Okay, so then to there's help, hydraulic to help tools. An, an, injured, an injured person, and then you get there and find out that we need the jaws of life to open it up. It's you there. get the truck right there. Correct. It's They're designed for this. Well, they have the compartments. That's what they were on the truck. For. That, yes. That's what I'm saying. There's equipment on that truck that you may need that you can't have completely equipped in the ambulance. That's, that's another reason why you have that vehicle there. Correct. Okay. Okay, we that's have. Enough. At this point, we have a motion and a second for two million five hundred fifteen thousand dollars, five hundred fifteen eight hundred eighty-five thousand uh, dollars. 
all those in favor of this amount? Anyone opposed? Yep. Yeah. Bill Jerry. Yeah. And abstentions none. Okay. A page seventy six total fire prevention one hundred eighty eight thousand five. Nope. What's that? Seventy five. Seventy five. Sorry. Thank you, Christy <laughs> and Richard. <laughs> Seventy-five, one hundred and fifty-three thousand five hundred ninety-two. Second. <coughs> All right, we're going to turn it back over to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the regular wages question up seventy percent. Provide discussion. Fringe benefits and salary of projected fire inspector needed. Please provide. Hampton Fire Rescue has one fire prevention officer. He is doing yeoman's work at this time, as you might imagine. He's a one-on paper hanger. Um, we've just identified a couple of times the discussion about all of the new construction that's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, building ha has obviously been inundated with permits. I know that uh, Mr. Schultz was in here discussing that with you guys. Uh, he has a ton of new construction. My fire prevention officer is reviewing the same plans. We're not dealing with one and two family residential, but anything above that or anything commercial, the plans come across our desk for review. This is a more than one person job. The other side of that is um, permits of assembly, which all of the businesses that are above 50 people need a permit of assembly. They need to be inspected, make sure that life safety is there, fire safety is there. We also have um, propane tank inspection, school inspections that are required annually, uh, various other inspections that come up. The Old Salt has a, an annual haunted house that needs to be an inspection done at that venue. Um, the inspections in the gas uh, when we're dealing with seafood festivals. The job itself of inspector would be, uh, I would say, at 40 hours would be missing 40 hours worth of work because it would be that busy. The inspector's position has been unfunded for several years. It has remained in the budget and in the contract as far as the position goes, but not the funding. So the $70,000 <coughs> that was requested to bring it all the way up, that the position um, in, in discussion the Board of Selectmen indicated that they want to return to the budget, and it was to talk about the cost of that. The potential um, salary for this person would be $30.76 an, uh, an hour for 39 weeks, starting April 1st. Um, depending on training, there would be incentives that go along with that. Uniform allowance of $700, which I do believe was not returned to, uh, if I read correctly in the budget, it was not returned to us, and we would absorb that as an agency. Um, and the vehicle was not absorbed, uh, was not returned to the budget either. This is a person who would be out in the public every day doing inspections in every type of venue you can imagine. So, French benefits, please. Um, I would like to defer to finance on that one if possible. Yeah, I'm trying to find the sheet that had all that on it. Thank you. Generally speaking, we use a calculation of about 30%. Yes, Acting Chief, I, you may not be able to answer this as well as maybe Fred can, but I think this <coughs> is a good spot to put in the history of this position because this is the position that we had, Fred, correct? That's correct. We had it. Can you tell us why it was taken out? And also, I don't think that you are or will be as active in this role perhaps as much as... Um, Chief Silva was because I know he was doing a lot of the inspections. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Fred, you, we have new people on this committee. So, from the sake of a historical standpoint, either one of you, if you could shed some light on what we had, where it went, who was doing the work, who's now doing the work, and why we so sorely <coughs> need this back. We had two full time employees when the department was reorganized and downshifted to one deputy chief. Uh, that position was, as it, when it was vacated, both positions were vacated at one point in time recently. We hired and filled one, and the department opted not to fill the other. Uh, it, it was a budget item, it was a personnel item, uh, but mostly it dealt with money. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, uh, we had those two people when they were working, were working a full 40 hour week plus overtime to keep up with the building. Just like the building department is. They have two full-time people just trying to keep up with the yeah. building and a part-time person assisting. 
So uh, no one can complete a building in town. Nobody can move into a building in town. No one can, can uh, now the churches can open and operate. Uh, this town hall can't open and operate without their inspection annual. Mm -hmm. All new buildings have to be inspected. And what's happening here, of course, with one person having to do all the plans, having to deal with all the fire engineers that are doing the work and the planning on those particular buildings, it's too much. It, it, the, the lag time is significant. And we've had to divert other people in the department who were qualified to do that inspection work, such as the chief, and not have him do departmental uh, administration in order to get the inspection work done so these people can open their buildings and go to work. Mm -hmm. The fringe benefits are $36,491.60, assuming the uh, two-person medical, which is what we do for any new position. So that would include the life insurance, health insurance, uh, Medicare, New Hampshire retirement, and workers' comp. Yeah. That's what I'm considering to be the fringe benefits, and that's the total of that. Yeah. My, my only comment here, Madam mm -hmm. Chairman, is this. There are ways to accomplish the job without always adding full-time people. I would be supportive of two part-timers. Give them a couple, a couple. Give them a vehicle each that's a couple, two, three years old. Give them some cell phones. Go to work. You don't have the moment one. you throw in a full timer, you are incurring more retirement liability. The state's fifty billion in a hole now. Every Five. year we're going up big time with retirement costs, health costs. I don't support this. I support part time, two of them, if he needs it. That's that'll give them sixty hours a week. And if they want to work overtime, let them work overtime. I don't care. But give them some used vehicles, give them some cell phones, get them out there with a schedule and get them to work. That's accomplishing the job from a prudent, value-orientated point of view. Throwing another full-timer out there, I wouldn't endorse that. That's my opinion. Here's my question. Could you accomplish the same result with two part-timers? Uh, we haven't explored that, but I can tell you that many of the projects, because of the nature of the beast, when you're reviewing plans, when you're going out to do inspections, uh, it's a, it's a drawn-out process. It is very instrumental to have one person who's responsible for doing inspections, another doing plan review, so that job specificity is there, and also continuity. They're able to see the plan, understand the plan, get familiar with it. If we have one person coming in on Monday and then again on Thursday, um, that continuity will be lost. You've gotten along without anybody. <laughs> I, I would I would say I understand, sir, but I'm not sure. Take them and run. I'm not sure that we've gotten along very well. Mm. Yeah, I think I, just if I could just add from getting getting along without somebody, I think you've had a lot of complaints. A lot of people right. call yeah. Fred. A lot of people call various people saying I can't get inspected. I can't get this. I can't get that. The new restaurant up there on uh, Exeter Road had a hard time opening because they couldn't get inspected. They had to rush that. So I mean. I, I don't think getting along is, is, is preventing businesses from opening up. Well, Jim, I think that's just the job. The goat, you can get the, the job done open. by other means. Yeah. It's not always adding people, adding people. You know, Jerry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something in there and, and kind of piggyback on what you guys are all saying, trying to lump it all together. I usually agree with the fact that if we could have two part-time people, not have to go through benefits, et cetera, et cetera, I, it's a preferred way to go for me. However, I worked in the food distribution business for a number of years. And until we can find a different way to reset the clock in this community, the spring will always happen and everybody will need you on top of all the regular things that are going on all at the same time. There's, there's another component, ma'am, too, yeah. that our fire prevention officer and our fire inspector, they're trained firemen. And this is a tested position. So they're able to function in that role as well. So they need to be trained and skilled in that role mm -hmm. and then educated to the new level of inspector. When they can't get their inspections done in a good, for, in a, I, in a good time frame. Him, I don't look at them that way. All right. Well, I'm going to give, right. give you a little bit more to your glasses. When they can't get that done on time, a lot of other things don't get done. You lose your crews. And I'm speaking glasses. to things outside of fire prevention that have to do with people in this town who make their <coughs> living in construction, in the restaurants, in the tourist industry that we have. When you cannot provide a good time frame, and I've been listening for half a dozen years, 
more complaints than you would think I'd be able to do something about, all right? And it's like, I'm sorry, I can't do anything. We're shorthanded in that department, and that's the way it is. People don't go to work. We had one restaurant just a couple of years back that employed 63 people that if it wasn't for the fire department <coughs> and the building inspector turning themselves inside out, they were going to be put off till the middle of July in the time frame that allowed for it. And that would have kept 63 people out of employment. So there's a lot more at stake here than just what it seems to be the fire inspection. There are all the trades. You, you have somebody out on a job with the trades, and Joe, <coughs> I'm sure you know this better than anybody. And you have a delay. You lose that crew. It's exacerbated in this community because in the summer, everybody wants a tradesman. And it just, it, it helps the people that pay their taxes across the board when we can cover this particular area. And I think it's just something we had. We had it, obviously, because we needed it, because we don't throw money at anything in this town. the department said they didn't need it anymore. Well, it, it. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I don't, I didn't, well, I was I don't know the back. Yeah, the focus the was on other things, and unfortunately it was a position that oh. should have put, been put back. Last year, I think it was in here for 144000 because it had a vehicle attached Correct. to it. This year, the vehicle is gone. I'm happy we can find another way to move around the town. And I'm sorry to take it off course, but I think we need, I, I just wanted to expand on that because I've been out there in a, di in, in, a different, um, in a different realm, in a different business, and see how it affects the people who have actually live and work in this community. Mm -hmm. So back on course, where were we with questions? Do we have anything else in this section? No? No, I don't have any All right, any Joe. Questions. Joe, <coughs> I, I uh, <coughs> yesterday, I spent an hour, an hour and a half with Scott Steele on his own time, on my own time, getting the description of what he really does. The building department, if we, we realize what the building department, they so many dollars a thousand. When we look at the building department, they're almost self-funded. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. C spray or A block for a sprinkler permit and a fire alarm permit is $75. Okay. That's no revenue. Right. 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 He spends. He was at least twenty-four man hours reviewing the permit before he issued the permit. Then he does inspections at least another eight to sixteen man hours for seventy-five dollars. So, and I brought this up last year when Silver was here. We need to increase the permit fees. If you increase the permit fees. Then you can fund this position, no problem. <coughs> I'm not saying you're going to fund it 100%, but we need that needs to be looked at. He, you know, permit uh, propane inspections. He does, you know, there's a couple hours site review, go out and investigate oil uh, oil permit permit fees. I don't think the people don't realize what he does. It's it's like a lost thing. If we don't have him, and God forbid we're at a restaurant, and you have a massive fire like you know Rhode Island, then all of a sudden they're going to point pointing fingers. Well, how come we don't have this person? We need this position. When I started here three years ago, Mary Louise was sitting right there in the vice chairman and said, "This has always been in the budget. They need an EMS position, so they took that inspector position and made an EMS position." We need to fund this. This needs to get done. Last year, last summer, not this summer, last summer we had a developer down the beach, ran the fire prevention officer through the newspaper, accusing him of all kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know, open late and all this stuff. And behind the scenes there was a miscommunication. There was never made issue. This fund, need, it, we need this position. It <clears throat> needs to be done. It's not a new position. It's always, always been there. And it needs to be done. We need it. I said that two months ago. Sonny? Thank you, Chip. Well, last year I mentioned that I didn't understand why they didn't use the retired fireman, and I was told that the contract doesn't allow he to lose his pension. Yeah. But I mean, that's an obvious solution. You can, you know what I mean? That's why. 
somebody who's 65 years old is still able to do inspections. And Could you be, wouldn't but have not to pay them the benefits. Current contracts. I don't understand why we don't go in that direction. I'm, I'm said I did know that we need the position. I will make two remarks. One is <coughs> that last year when we had all this hoopla about all these inspections at the same time as the beach was opening, on one side of the argument I looked at it this way. All those people that wanted their fire inspections, most of them, knew that there was going to be a busy time at the beginning of the season. It happens every year. I know, I know. You can set your clock by it, they don't get unless you haven't lived in Hampton at all. Okay. So if I call, like I'm working on my house now, when I call and ask for these things, I know that they are busy. I have to plan ahead. Planning ahead is 99% of the doing business almost any place, unless I'm really uninformed at Hampton Beach, as all those people want to call on the same day and have service tomorrow. It's just not going to happen. I don't care if you have 50 people to this job. So that's my remark about that. I don't feel sorry for those people at all. Okay, now, back to the, the job itself. I agree with Mr. Genoy. If we're going to go down this road, you hire a full-time person, you get 40 hours out of them. You have two part-time, you can have up to almost 30. And you can probably do it for less money. And, like <clears throat> my buddy over here two doors down can said you can have somebody that's retired. They can work up to some a percentage of the retirement thing before they dis get disqualified on the retirement plan. So that's, that's a good idea. I mean, we have some retired people working for the town now, so I don't, need, I don't see what the argument is against it. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> we can't get enough people to volunteer for anything in this town, so I don't know what. <laughs> um, the only thing I have is, here is everything we've got from the CIP committee. And I will agree with you in this way. We don't plan for anything in this town. <coughs> I end. I said my piece, Michael. I think we need the position, and it's about time we did something about it. Not the default budget. And not the default. Not the we yeah. talked about this last year, Jerry. You weren't you weren't on the board at the time. We talked about this, having two part-time people and all of that. As the chief pointed out. The fire prevention officer is also a fireman. Okay, doesn't have to be. So he can. So there is a diversification in labor no, but in listen, this world. Listen, Jerry. The other thing was that we talked about this last year, as Sonny pointed out. You, a retired fireman, that's getting a pension, can't work part time. Okay, just can't do it. It just doesn't happen. So, uh, the the. Um, so we, we talked about all this last year. That's not he can work up, not no, no, Steve, he can work up to a certain amount of hours. You have an assistant manager. You're going to make up to seven hundred dollars a week. You can make a certain percentage. A month. I'm sorry, seven hundred dollars a month. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm that, stand that corrected. No, I don't think it's that. Yes. <coughs> no, it's, that it's different. I know it is. I thought that's what I was told from last year, and that's what Sonny was referring to just now. Once you've retired. No, no, so many hours a week you can work. All right. The other thing. Yes, but it's you can only make up to a certain level per month, otherwise okay. you're in trouble. And the continuity is something that you pointed out, and I agree, that, I agree with that as well. The, um, now last year, you were going to, you're going to need a, a vehicle, and this year you don't? We requested a vehicle, and I know, but uh, you're not going to get it. Correct. So how would the, what are you going to use? I remember last year asking a, a question that may have seemed foolish, but I said, would it be possible to take one of the old ambulances that you trade in and, and it has no value anyway and, you know, use that as the inspector's vehicle to drive around? But um, what, so what will the inspector use? Currently, we've just received a vehicle from the police department that we've, uh, we've gone over. We're putting radios in it this week. Oh, okay. um, it's not the ideal vehicle for this, this purposes. But for this year, then, you know, I really need a person. Mm -hmm. I, need, I need somebody to do the job. Mm -hmm. um, to get them out there, we will be able to use this vehicle as a temporary basis um, mm -hmm. until next year. Okay. Then I'll come Thank see you, you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank well, you, sir. Uh, there's no question this position is critical. 
the town invested 12 million bucks in infrastructure at the beach. That resulted in the state investing 15 million bucks on the ocean side of and there's an enormous amount of growth on the town side of Ocean Boulevard. <coughs> you can't say to people, build it and come, but we won't let you open it. <laughs> the only way it can get opened is to have somebody who authorizes it to open. And I don't think the level of what's going on now is best served by part-time <coughs> help. Uh, part-time help is far more transient than full-time help. It tends to be less experienced than full-time help and it doesn't project authority either to the people it reports to or the people it's dealing with in the business community. Last year and the year before, there was a lot of frustration at the beach. Amazon and UPS have the same problem around Christmas the beach has in March, but they manage to handle it through management. They add additional staffing or whatever seasonally, but this is critical. We should not have done what we did in the infrastructure if we don't intend to make the rest of it work. Well, so Thank you. Jim? Did I hear you say that the, fire, the police department gave the fire department and a vehicle? The police department gave the fire department. Excuse me. Yeah. It was, we acquired it through the police department. It's an old retired cruiser. Mm -hmm. So, we it was Three ten. Three ten. So what? Three ten. Cruiser three ten. Oh okay. It's <coughs> so I guess that was surplus from the police yeah. department's point of view. Yeah. That's a question I like to refer to Mr. Walsh. It was replaced with another vehicle. Right. So we bought a new it vehicle. It wasn't used as a trade in because it wasn't worth the trade in. <coughs> it wasn't worth the trade in, but it's worthy it's for old. the fire inspector. It's well if he breaks well, no, down. It's too old. It's the it, it's it, it's too old. Um, we've had we've put new tires on it. Captain Kennedy's done some work to it now. About how much? A little over a thousand dollars, I would oh, say. I think it was a good yeah. Yeah. Right. Those right. vehicles are purchased uh, when they're used. The police cruisers are purchased with the Crown Vicks. They're purchased by uh, companies that refit them for taxi cabs. And when they reach a certain age, they won't touch them with their cruisers because they've been through the mill. So mm -hmm. they've reached more than that age, so they just wouldn't take it as a trade. Well, they wouldn't touch it, but it's good enough for a fire inspector, basically. Well, it still operates, it still runs, yeah, it's, still, it's still inspectable, it's still... Uh, what, what model year is that? Was it number 310? Is that the one? Yeah. 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 What year was it? 310 was a 2011 Crown Vic. Right. Patrol car, a little over 87,000 miles on it. They wouldn't touch that on, uh, on, the, on the open market? No. Interesting. Let me comment, too, on the part-time. Isn't that hard to believe? This is a union position. You have to collectively bargain it out of the union. <laughs> yep, that's true. So that isn't going to happen uh, because you're going to have to do forced bargaining. It means that there's going to be a substantial cost to the town. So it's a union you contract? You have to hire in accordance with that union contract, and it says that person has to be a full-time firefighter, and he has to be a full-time employee. Okay. So we're trapped into that if you want to, you don't want to put that. But that's what the contract calls for. Thank you, Fred. So it's all or nothing you, on that. Well, I was curious about, I mean, I last year I supported the fire inspector, and I haven't heard um, uh, anything come into my brain that would cause me to change that position. Okay? So I'm not trying to drive that point. No, no, home. I just wanted to. I do appreciate the clarity. Yeah, appreciate it. I'm that. of the opinion that CBA should be changed. It may well, take a year or two or three to do so, but it should be changed. The, the CBA is not on this. I understand so, that. Yeah, okay. We don't have the ability to do that. So let me. Uh, there was some some points of, uh, about uh, being able to hire, independent of the union issue, just the issue of whether or not you can hire a retired union person in a part time position. And there seems to be some confusion or different points of view on that. And uh, Fred, do you have any thought on the that? The answer is you can. They can work up to 32 hours per week. Right. Okay, that's it. They can't work more than that, or they end up losing their retirement and have to go on the back on the retirement rolls. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, most individuals that you'll find that are retired are not going to come back and work in that environment. Right. It's too restrictive. It ties up their time. This particular job takes more than 40 hours a week. So, right. uh, 
and where you're, you're, you're required to have a full-time union employee, it's not going to fit. Well, I just want to get the confusion out of the air on that point. I mean, there is no limit in terms of uh, how much money the person can make. It's only a limit in terms of how many hours per no, week he can work. Is that what I heard? It's how many hours per week. Exactly. That's it. The only uh, limit is hours Police officers, per week. there is a limit for part-time police officers on the number of hours they can work and the amount of money they can make. As a police officer? Yes. As a police officer. Right. But there is no restriction on other employees in the municipality. Okay. Thank you. So we're all like okay with that, right? No more confusion. Okay. Good. Uh, <laughs> I don't like confusion. <laughs> thank you, Tim. And uh, with that, I have nothing further. No questions. Um, I think it comes down to a matter of just increasing the fee. I cannot believe that the owners who made millions off of the sea spray only had to pay seventy-five dollars mm -hmm. for fire inspections. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever it takes to. So much and the fact unit, that maybe, the or? fees have been allowed to exist at this ridiculous level, low level. For so many years is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely support the second position with an increase in fees to cover it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All set. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Um, I would support adding this position as a full-time employee. Um, this is prevention. It's two things, really. It's prevention and it's also allowing businesses to open and other people being able to go to work. Um, you know, when there's a hero because you save someone's life, you get a lot of attention. Someone who prevents an accident from happening doesn't get a lot of attention, and that's, to me, what this position does. Um, my concern is human nature being what it is. If, if we don't have the proper staff, whoever's doing it is going to rush through it because there's someone in the press who's complaining, you know, mm -hmm. like, this guy can't open his business. So he or she might be tempted to like, cut corners and maybe, and I'm not saying they would, but that's human nature. I think this is too important a position, not to staff. I also think, and I'm a dinosaur in this regard, but when you tell somebody we're going to give you benefits, that, that's your indication that this is a serious position to the town. You value its importance. So I think it should be a full-time position with the <laughs> benefits that this will Thank you. The only thing I'll add to this before we go to a vote on this is that if we were talking about this in the same respect that we talk about building inspection, they paid for themselves. Mm -hmm. This whole discussion would have been a mute point. Mm -hmm. um, fire department had this position, it needed this position. The battle was done a long time ago to substantiate whether we needed it or not. We have more building going on than ever in this town. The town hasn't changed. All the, the new infrastructure, the state investment, our investment has done nothing but draw more people up here. I, I, I think we have to lead out and fund this position and do it in a, in a logical, responsible way. But that being said, and I know Fred you missed a couple of our meetings, but I think overwhelmingly across the board, department by department, we need some sort of confidence in the fact that perhaps all the fees across the board in departments will be looked at because there's certainly funding that the taxpayers are being forced to do that could be done by the people and the, the end users. All right. Th those fees that we're allowed to change mm -hmm. to take into consideration actual costs are looked at annually. A number of the fees in this department are set by statute. Is that yeah. and, and, why and we can't move them? And, and <coughs> we just can't just change them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to go through a process that's somewhat more likely to do that. Well, I'm not uh, saying it'll on be... On a local e level, Fred? Good. Uh, state level. Yeah. State level. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's easy, Too but bad. I'm just saying that, you know, when we look at some of these things, there are other remedies for us oh, yeah. in we, the we fees. Don't disagree. And I've heard very little discussion on that end of things, so maybe if we could open that up. We see the need. Around the table, I think we see the need. How we get the need done, maybe we have a little different. The local opinion. ordinance that's under our control, we could change it. If it's, a, <coughs> yeah. if it's a state statute, then we have a representative here that could look into that and open it up up at the state level. Well, well Fred yeah. did say some are dictated no. by some statute. Well, yeah. I mean, we but that means some are not. 
But what you could do is include Now, Joe was referring to one particular one in his discussion. Is that particular one under statute? Wait, wait, you're all talking the same I believe one of those is. Because I believe place of assembly is supposed to be twice a year. Place of assembly is once a year, except in certain circumstances because of size. or Right, it's supposed to be twice a year. So so you're only charging, they can only charge, I believe, it's only $25. That's correct, by state law. And you're doing it twice a year. So that's where... I guess we asked our, our rep here, yeah. and Dave, I would ask you to sit down and talk with Scott Steele of how you, you, you mentioned how somebody may rush through to get a permit through. I would ask you to sit down and talk with Scott Steele, and, and you can see, if you sit down and talk with anybody, sit down and talk with him, you can see his, there's a procedure to be done, and he does not vary from that procedure. So I guess I'm kind of sticking up for him the way you say somebody's going to, if we get another a fire inspector position, they're going to rush through because we have somebody of stature in town that wants to get a permit. <clears throat> Scott doesn't do that. So what we would need to do is be able to prove that the increase in fees is justified by the expense incurred. Sure. Because raising fees mm -hmm. is no more but political this, at the But the, the same, level the same, same token is that is we, ha we have developers in town, there's a procedure. And they're not, these developers are not new to this town. They mm -hmm. know the procedure, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's there for a reason. You know the procedure, you deal with it. Just because you may own something in town and you think you got a special, you're not. There's a procedure in town for a reason. And, and that's why it's done. So I don't understand why we have some developers that say, you know, we're getting picked on. You're not getting picked on. There's a procedure that needs to be done. Oh, I mean, if, if you go, I mean, every city in town has got to be confronted with this. If a guy goes out, a fire inspector goes out and spends 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 hours inspecting something like the sea spray, mm -hmm. and it's $75, that's a throwaway. That's a throwaway. Right. And if I mean, they, and I mean, if they, would, they would want to be in, a, in on that discussion. Because I think we should move the question and discuss this the under revenue. Be, yeah, it's something we can't no yeah. control over. Yeah. Yeah. Discuss right. it under revenue. I think, I think we're all... All right, we have a motion. For right, we're, so not, we're not so done with that section. Yes, yes we are. Yes, we, yeah. are. Yeah. we are. Fire that prevention. Was a small section. Fire training prevention. and recruiting. Yeah. That's a different wait, wait, section. Okay. Okay. That's That's different. Different. Wait a minute. Let's get this amount wait a minute. voted for. So, is, so can I ask the question? If we want to fund this position, is this where we need to make a motion to put the money in for that position? It's already there. It's already it's there. there. It's already there. Hello. Order select the recommend Hello, Mr. Five days. <laughs> I'm asking the question. It's, it's there. I'm being proactive. Okay? So, <laughs> if you are in favor of this position, that number is one hundred fifty-three thousand five hundred ninety-two dollars. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed. Yeah, first. I just think we're too dogmatic and too pragmatic. There's more than one way. I have another suggestion how I this understand. could be accomplished, uh -huh. but I won't bring it up okay, thank at you. this point. We're going under training now? No, right now we're going to take, take a 10 minute break. Thank okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A little 10 minute break to recharge our batteries and continue. And um, we're going to send it back to you, Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Uh, training and recruiting. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Oop, oop. I, I moved 32,625. Page 77. We're on this over here. They do it. Okay. Okay. This is the training budget. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, the question comes to me as training and recruiting up 11% to $30,000. 2014 budget 27,028. 2014 annualized spending from October is 15, 9, 16. Previous three years average 17,407. Please explain. Looks like five to ten thousand dollars more than you have historically spent. We have gone without um, significant live fire training. Um, me recent memory, I would say better than nine years since we have had an entire crew go through as a crew. It's one thing to send an individual to fire school, but that individual, it, it's very a unique uh, experience to work as a fireman because you're a team player, always. And if you go with your crew to the fire school where we're gonna have a, a live fire drill, then they're able to operate in that building together as a team and build that cohesiveness. This hasn't happened in recent memory in Hampton Fire. It's been put in the budget several times, but this is the first item that usually gets slashed. 
This is equivalent, this live fire training especially, is equivalent to the police um, firearms training. <laughs> they need to have it to be qualified, and our, our personnel need to have it as well. It's that necessary. So do you have a couple of houses you can light up and then go put the fire on? How do you do that? Well, no. Um, it, with yours, Jim. <laughs> 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 volunteers? Sir, your, your address again, please? <laughs> uh, Any volunteers? You know, live fire training when it comes to uh, existing structures like that is extremely difficult because there's a safety component that uh, we follow NFPA 1410. There's all kinds of rules that need to go into place. We need special personnel, safety personnel. You have to um, create the environment. So in an example on a ranch house, you have to board up the windows that you're not going to be using as ventilation. You're, you're going to have to ventilate the roof immediately so that you can have uh, control points for the fire. Uh, you need safety personnel inside. You need people to light the fire. You need to have qualified personnel. It's a, a very expensive endeavor. Um, there are burn buildings Steve, in Concord. They'll allow us to train. It's a training building. Oh, it's they have, uh, a place in Seabrook. Hmm. Got just for that purpose. Yeah, where is that? The Concord Fire Department. Yep. Yeah. Correct. We also have one in Guilford, which president. we've been using um, with the Guilford Fire Department. They've done a tremendous job um, doing that. Currently, the one that's out in Brentwood is under repair, and it hasn't been usable or feasible for some time. Yeah. Now, the ones that they've got constructed, are they good size? Or? Huge. Absolutely. Oh, they are? Yep. Who does it? Some kids from a trade school or something? No, this is a cement structure. This is uh, existing. And so it's fire, but it's simulated fire. We're not we're not burning an entire bedroom. We're not burning an entire house. This is a fire in a, a representation of a bedroom in a burned building. It's designed for the purposes of going in as a team, coordinated so effort. It's a house fire. Simulated. Simulated, simulated within a... Real fire, a concrete simulated door. house. The one in Guilford is really... It's huge, but it's... It's made I've out been of been there. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. containers. It's yes. a, it's container tra um, trailers. Mm. It's a wonderful design. It really is. Yeah. And Guilford Fire, I have to give them, uh, you know, props. They they do a tremendous job. Simulate colonial houses. Mm. I mean, um, the one in Guilford does. Um, there are there are several uh, different designs. Obviously, um, how you build the the scenario will matter too. Because if you say, okay, this is a one floor residential, there's not going to be any fires on the second floor. If you say this is a two floor commercial and we say that it's going to be like, you know, Main Street construction, that means that it's commercial on the bottom, we have residents above, then we anticipate when we're going in that we're going to find a, a small bedroom upstairs and do a search in that way. If it's commercial underneath, the, the design of the building really dictates. But it has enough um, variety in these mm -hmm. simulations to Certainly. fulfill your... For a day's training, for a day's training. What, what I have here listed in this budget is one day's training per group, four groups. That's it. Nothing more, nothing extensive over one group. All right, and I just want to ask one question. I heard Fred's comment on that, that you're way behind on this, and I see that more money was requested, but cut back to 30000 for the request. Will this accomplish what you need to accomplish? I'll be able to send full groups to live fire training. Okay. This is also, there's, there's a, I, I alluded to it earlier when I discussed NIST and UL, the training that they've been doing and the science based studies that they've been performing uh, with modern construction and modern furnishings versus uh, legacy construction and legacy furnishings, right. grandma's old stuff. Right. Um, the training that goes along with that and the associated training bringing in outside instructors, this will help uh, defer some of that cost as well. Thank you. Um, any questions on this? I have a, just a quick one. Uh, back to Mutual. Back to Mutual, they have a, a big training facility. I believe it's in Rhode Island and they do the same thing. I don't know if you can look into that. Travel expenses become a problem as it stands. We have to when we go to Guilford, we take a fire engine, oh, okay. and we usually take an off. You know, one of our reserve pieces. It goes up there. Our personnel are familiar with that pump. Okay. They'll pump on that for the day, um, and it, that's a long drive. No, no, that's, yep. But I know, I know yep. Fifty Mutual because they do a lot of commercial sure. insurance. And we'll I've, fly I've them all been down. down. I've been down there a couple of times <laughs> for electrical stuff. Sure, so I've seen. So okay. I think we've exhausted this. Any, any questions? The only other question I had is, um, <coughs> like anything else, is there anything from the state or the uh, federal oh, government? As far as training goes? Yes. We are probably one of the more proactive departments, I would say, in training. Um, we have something called Pro Time, where our personnel are engaged in outside education and for 36 hours a year. Uh, if they're able to accomplish that, which is a, a large task, they receive a stipend. And that's part of um, CBA. But that 
that training is all based out of something from national um, the National Fire Academy. We have the New Hampshire Fire Academy. There's outside classes. Um, the Seacoast Fire Chiefs puts on training that our members attend. We're training constantly. This live fire is different because I'm taking an entire group out of service, right. sending them somewhere. So it is, it's, it's different. Are there any grants? Is, I guess that's the Grants word. for live fire, it would be, I would be very hard to to say. Not that, not recently. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um. <coughs> we have had, to, to answer a question, we have had grant funded recently with um, rescue swimmer training and rescue boat operator. Okay. okay. But yeah. that was specific to that. Now, I mean, let me, uh, this uh, this sleds and, and, and fire ice thing and you no, know where done that, Jim. yeah, but what are, is the training in here for that? Oh. The training will be part of ongoing training given through the um, New Hampshire Fire Academy. Where, where not everybody will get trained this year. Where is that from? <sighs> That'll be out of our training budget. What, this one here. Mm -hmm. This page that we're on. Is there? So they go up to New Hampshire. Training Institute or Academy and Correct. That, that training. Some of these are off site. You have pool. You have pool? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need training for it, obviously. Absolutely, without question. It pays off. Uh, the rescue swimmer training that we've done, we are up to, I believe it's 13 now. We've mm -hmm. had 13 open water rescues in the last year and a half. That's a tremendous amount of people, and I'm not discounting what the lifeguards do by any means. They do a tremendous job of saving lives. But our people, Hampton Fire Rescue has rescued 13 people out of the water in a year and a half. We've had rescue swimmer training and rescue boat operator training um, consistently now for two years. And it is absolutely paying off because we are putting assets in the water. Those guys are going in and they're swimming in very dangerous conditions. Why is it so hot in here, Madam Chair? Yeah, good question. Yeah. Oh, good question. The heat on. <laughs> All right. Don't mind that under the statutory. Is that because the fire department's here or what? <laughs> okay. For the amount of $32,625, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous? Thank you, John. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Selectman Wardell? Communications. <laughs> on page. 79 200 I moved two hundred and twenty four thousand two hundred sixteen dollars Second. question that I have is regarding uh, regular wages and the question is all CBA and they are in fact all CBA yeah. so basically there is nothing we can do with anything in this section right. all right. right for that reason I'm going to ask for a vote all those in favor <coughs> opposed unanimous <coughs> Repair services, page 81. I move $122,500. Second. Vehicle maintenance is up 9.65% to $121,500. What vehicles and what are their ages? 2011, 12, 13 average was 105666 2014 annualized from October is 87,000. Why the jump? Excuse me, we have an aging fleet uh, as evidenced by the request for a warrant article on for a new fire engine pumper. Um, our fleet, and I can provide, I actually brought copies if everybody would like a copy of the ages of the vehicles. Um, currently, uh, engine one, our frontline piece, is 2010, four years old. But as we see, the next two. The frontline piece at the beach is 12 years old. The reserve engine that we have up at headquarters is 13 years old, and the reserve engine that we have at the beach is 26 years old. That's for our engines. Our ladder is seven. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Our ladder is seven. We're very fortunate right now to have Captain Kennedy sitting here, as he is the vehicle maintenance officer for the department. Um, I will tell you that the budget that was supplied for the 122,500 request, and then the 121 that was indicated here, um, he requested 125,500 based on his projected needs when we look at what it's costing us to maintain the fleet um, to get them to get the pumps certified is costing a lot more money as they age the as I indicated in front of the Board of Selectmen a week and a half ago uh, engine four's pump has uh, totaled I think it was almost twelve thousand dollars I do believe uh, since 2012 just to get it to certification that's repairs necessary that's the overclocking that's necessary to make the pump work appropriately to get it certified uh, that's not including the vehicle maintenance outside of that that's just just for the pump 
the vehicle maintenance itself is costing a lot more as the vehicles age, as more things break on them, as they go down the road. Is this a mileage thing related, or um, I, I believe that more of its time. Um, the the two vehicles that we're driving right now are a ten and eleven years old, or eleven and twelve years old each. Um, we have a 26-year-old fire engine that frequently responds as the first due piece. So what are some of the miles? Like engine 10, two, uh, 2010, how many miles on that? Engine 2010, you said. That, uh, yep. 11. 2010 Pierce. We actually took the mileage off of our... Yeah, we can get you that information. Go. Why don't we pass this around, Cap? It's, it's, it's not a mileage thing. It's a... Well, no, it's, it, it, when it comes to diesel, it's, it's a combination mileage and engine hours, obviously, if it's running. Um, it, may not be, it may not be driving down the road, but at a fire, that pump is running. The engine is running. And as it stands, you know, it, it's just going to be where. Doesn't have any mileage. No, all right, we'll get you that. All that information is in our yeah. book. Yeah. 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 Appendix. Yeah. So in the back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Back of the book. Back of the book. So it's not, yeah. it's not necessarily mileage. It's both. No, it's in the back of the book. Right. Yeah. Our 6484. Are the new poppers you're buying, are they all made out of the stuff that's getting more resistant to? rust like stainless steel and that sort of thing because i know years ago we there was a lot of conversation about how the trucks were put together is that true yeah it was uh, aluminum aluminum now so it corrodes in the salt water and the sea coast is just eats them up but the aluminum the, the marine environment still takes a toll okay. it certainly does but yes and um the one of the companies that we researched for the new pumper um we discussed the paint and they actually do a specific paint job um, they paint the frame prior to assembly, so there's a warranty on the paint level just because they understand that this is where it wears, this is where it rusts. So they do it a little bit differently, and we said, hey, great, you do it differently. We have a salt environment. How will it work there? And they, they were going to certify that it would, it would do what it needed to do. The reason why I asked is because on regular passionate vehicles, they used to undercoat. And now that they don't do that anymore because they want to increase the car mileage, blah, 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 make them cheaper, blah, blah, blah. But on fire trucks, we're not worried about the gas mileage particularly, okay? So they, they don't undercoat them or anything like that. They just put this special paint on, I suppose. Correct. No undercoating. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions on this? I have one. How old is that boat now? That's got to be... It's actually on there. Yeah. Put it on the paper that's being passed. Marine, Marine One? one yeah. In the back of your 2003. 2003. 11 years. It's 11, 11 years old. How's that holding up in the salt water? It's actually holding up tremendously well. We've had some repairs. We just <laughs> conducted a, a repair recently on the engine shroud, um, the bars that go around the back. It started to take some rust and started to, to fracture along the weld lines. Um, but otherwise, it, it's holding up, holding up very well. well. Yep, very okay, thank Excellent you. purchase. I just have one simple question. Uh, how many are both ladder trucks, or are we still on down one ladder? We have one. Okay. Anyone else with a question on this section? Not, not only not a question, Chief, but just a compliment. I like the layout that you have of this vehicle inventory mm. because it shows a timeline of what you're projecting the replacement of these vehicles. I'll say thank you, but I didn't come up with it. I'm not going to take the credit. So I'd like, like to have seen that with all of the other yeah, departments, me too. rather than just a, a, an inventory. Give a list of recommendations next this year. shows a timeline that well, all right, in 2018. He wants to print. Mm. I think that's an excellent, yes. excellent format. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you using uh, the DPW at all for vehicle maintenance? We do from time to time. Oil changes and and uh, our our payments to DPW in this line item. Excuse me. They are. Yes, they are. Thank you. Payments to DPW. Reimbursement to DPW. There you go. Ladder truck. There's no, uh, there's no indication on the detail sheet as to how much the payments are, have been, right? It varies because, right. you know, uh, it happened two weeks ago. I went and had a valve stem replaced. Um, but when we need something that's warranty work or other, we'll go to the, the vendor or we may end up going 
body it's, work? It's a new it's a new process basically. The DPW doing this kind of maintenance for other departments and getting a cross county credit for it. Very new. Yeah, and uh, it's it's I think a good thing, but one issue that it does give rise to is a visibility problem or a visibility lack of visibility in terms of how much <coughs> is getting transferred over to DPW uh, from your account and uh, how much is being saved as a consequence. So a big truck and vehicle. Where, do you, where do you get them repaired? Well, for pumps, we actually have uh, Reliance uh, up in Vassalboro, Maine. They do the pump work. For uh, engines and ladder repair specifically, we see Minuteman Truck, and they are in Waltham. Waltham. Walpole, Walpole. Walpole. No, Walpole, Massachusetts, yes. down by Gillette Stadium. Yeah. Um, locally, if we need repairs on that are able to be handled by local mechanics, we use National Wrecker out of Portsmouth, Greenland. Brakes, for instance, right? Would be National Wrecker, right? Out of where? Um, the Portsmouth, I believe. He's in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. Is any of this coming out of DPW? No, no, uh, no way. Um, Major repair like for fire trucks cannot be mm -hmm. done like. Nope. DPW is just doing basic Oil maintenance, maintenance <coughs> right? Service. Just basic. Oil basically, they're working on our vehicles, the smaller vehicles, and, and only basic maintenance of that, only. for the most part. Yep. Right. And, and but that 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 does add some cost savings. Right. That's, that's real, just not visible. And I'd like to mm. see yeah, us I again work a little bit better on on visibility on some of these things because some of the things are just basically good news. Right. I think is probably one of them. Um, did I did I hear that there was some problem with our Hampton Navy? I mean, uh, it was a Marine one. Was it there was a small little, <laughs> there was a small little repair that was made last week uh, on the engine shroud on one of the pipes. Other than that, no, it's it's operating very well. Okay, so we don't we don't anticipate a, a replacement coming soon on that. Not for Marine one. Marine two Marine was zero. just serviced. I believe it was last year. We bought new pontoons, um, and the the rigid hull remained in place. New pontoons were fixed. Um, Marine two is in great shape right now. I noticed that for a number of years that the there's a fire truck that goes down Dustin Avenue, crosses mm. over to Harbor Road, backs up yeah. into uh, the Navy's port or whatever you call it, <laughs> uh, does something there for a time and then yep. then drives away. Yep. I wasn't sure what that exercise was, but vehicle, I've noticed that chaps. I've noticed that that doesn't seem to be taking place with the same frequency lately. Oh, certainly. It has. Um, yep, they're oh. doing vehicle checks. Um, frequently, they're they're going down there. They're operating the boat. We've had the boat winterized. We've had the pier winterized now too, so that changes our schedule just a bit. Um, the boat's been moved to its winter position. We discussed that today. It's been moved to its winter position on the pier so that it's uh, okay. able to tolerate the wind. But they're still currently going down there. In the summertime, you see them down there a lot more too because um, the seagulls <laughs> love our pier, so they're down there and they're pressure washing that re you know once a week. Okay. So Thank that's why. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other further questions on this section? I, I just have a kind of a staffing question. Sure. When you're doing a marine rescue, what is the implication to the land staffing by having those people out in the water? We're going to transmit uh, Box 7 and get back all available personnel. Um, the captain's uh, role in that will he'll tell pe um, Fire Alarm how many people to call back. Um, when we are going out, we go out with four on the boat. And if there's a beach rescue to be made, then the engine typically will respond to the ocean front. So the personnel in the back are getting dressed in their um, personal flotation devices, which are, are wetsuits. Uh, they'll be going entering the water, which is how we've had. Actually, Captain Kennedy was in charge of one of the rescues that, that occurred that day where we had two firefighters enter the water through the surf. And then the Marine unit was staffed with the remaining personnel, came out and met them around the jetty. So they were able to get the person, the person in the water onto the boat. So the entire land staff is used for marine rescue. So all actively engaged fire people are involved in this one activity. Correct. So there's no staffing until uh, call back. people call. Yep, in. that's what we're calling back staff at that point. <clears throat> that's a pretty good argument for needing more help. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we ready to vote? Yep. All those in favor? I don't have any problem with this. Opposed? Unanimous. Next section. Next section is. Just Our stations and buildings. Yeah. Page 83. 83. 83. I move 
Uh, subtotal, okay, $105,369. Second. <coughs> okay, uh, comments. Electric, 2014, annualized out close to budgeted figure. Heat and fuel, the same. Water, what is the rationale on water use? Mm -hmm. It looks like 2014 was budgeted very low, but we're using more gallons than we ha historically have. If so, why? Um, we built two fire stations. So the beach fire station that existed, 64 Ashworth Ave, had a total of one, two, three bathrooms, one slop sink for day-to-day uh, -day use, and a kitchen. The new fire station is 10,000 square feet. It's got one, two, three, four, five bathrooms. We have a kitchen. We have not only a one-inch water line domestic, we also have a six-inch water line sprinkler being fed to that building. Oh. So we're now up to fire code for the first time. Um, 140 Winnicunnet Road, headquarters, they had, uh, we conducted a 10,000 square foot addition there as well. We increased the capacity by, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five bathrooms, plus a decon room, which has a slop sink for normal washing. We also have a decon shower. Um, we also have one inch domestic line coming in, and we have a six inch sprinkler line bringing us up to current fire code. So the increase was the impact of the additional water being used there. Now we also have an increase in the rates, don't we, from last there year and this yeah. year? Yeah. Aquarian's been... And what percentage was that, Fred? They keep on moving so fast, I can't keep I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I agree with that. But it was not inexpensive. Right. And, of course, we, we, we pay a sizable amount of money for the... Uh, the sprinkle line, the, the fire standby service at the, the two buildings. Yeah. We didn't mm -hmm. have that before. We didn't have that before. So the yeah. fire station could have burned. Um, That's God's honest truth. the road. <laughs> they have before. However, <coughs> in the future, I mean, this is a big jump this year because right. we went not only from one station, <coughs> we went to two. And I don't know how much we increased the space. And uh, you just went a total over of 20, two, about 20,000 square feet. So the, the fire station at the beach is 10,000 square feet. Yeah. The one that existed previously was about half of that, if that. Um, when we look at the addition to 141, another 10,000 square feet, we still have the other building, which has one, two, uh, two bathrooms. Uh, we still have a slop sink in there, and we have an ice maker now on the other side. So um, for EMS, for rehab, we have an ice maker so that we're able to bring chilled water to the firefighters if they're fighting fire. Um, so that's supplied. Um, we had, an, a, 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 I believe that's, that's pretty much it, but we did sprinkler the existing building too. So we now have sprinkler lines running into the old fire station, upstairs, downstairs, and the apparatus bay, which it never had before. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is going forward from this point, we have this big peak. Right based mm -hmm. on the new facilities, you have a new level. plus, I think it was, what, 20, 25% on the water rate mm. in the past <coughs> year. Very big. So barring, and I'll leave that caveat, barring any further increases <laughs> well, that's, that's from the water company, we should start, we should see this flat line next year a little bit, well, or begin to flat line. Yeah. <coughs> it will as long as aquarium holds Well, that's line. what I just said, <laughs> right. barring any increases. That doesn't look like they will. All right, any, all right, we'll go around. Anybody on this side? Joe, I'll start there and go around. Did we talk about building maintenance here? Well, we're still on fire maintenance, That's fire stations and buildings. Oh, is that yeah. a separate? Is that no, a separate? It's, no, it's in building. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that's part of it. Yep, that's what I was just discussing. All right. What it's all about. And the plumbing and electrical repairs. Plumbing and electrical repairs, $3,000 budgeted. Floor maintenance, 3300 duct and drain cleaning. Plumbing and electrical, we still have two buildings to maintain. Um, as it stands, we've identified problems that were dealt with um, swiftly and professionally by Ekman Construction uh, when the building was under warranty. We've been in the buildings now for over a year, and now they have, and they still will, conduct any type of repairs if it's a, an identifiable problem due to construction. But over the course of time, as we've seen, there's a problem with the kitchen faucet, so that needs to be repaired or replaced. There's a problem with the toilet flushing in the ladies' room right now, um, so that needs to be repaired and replaced. This is over a year. This is use. This is time. Um, those costs, that's what that's supplying. The floor maintenance, we had the installation of VCT tile, which is a very easy-to-clean um, type of flooring. 
However, it needs to be maintained. Our firefighters work, they do all of the custodial duties for the fire stations. They do floor mopping, they do vacuuming, they take out the garbage, windows, we even have that for them. They do windows. They're very hardworking individuals, <laughs> so they do. You know, um, my wife doesn't. <laughs> they are very hardworking individuals in the custodial realm, but one of the things that they're not doing right now because they're not equipped is, um, is preparing the floors and, and doing a, a wax and a buff. We just don't have the equipment or the training to do that to make sure we do it appropriately. So the budgeted item here is for both fire stations. The new addition has VCT tile for all of administration all the way down into the living quarters. And the new fire station at the beach, the entire upper floor is VCT tile that really needs to be taken care of. So that's what that budget line item is. Duct and drain cleaning, uh, it's an essential piece of our operations. Obviously, we operate in New England. Snows all the time, rains all the time. We get salt environment. We back the trucks into the garage, into the apparatus bay, and they drip. When they do, it has to go somewhere. So we actually have drains in the floor, and you may have seen them if you visited the fire station. They fill up with sand, salt, and just about anything else, any other type of debris. We wash the vehicles. There's soap that goes along with that, goes into the drains. Um, nothing chemical. There's nothing to worry about as far as that goes. But the sand, salt, and other debris gets lodged in our drains. So we need to get them periodically. We have an awful, awful lot of apparatus bays now, too. I mean, we're going to be doing floor maintenance. Wouldn't it be wise to get the machinery or whatever it takes to do it ourselves? This, is, this was uh, specced out, I believe, to be once a year. So once a year for both. I don't know if it would be wise to, to make the purchase. 3300 bucks once a year? Both stations. Machinery would cost you more, Jerry. I don't know. The buffer. I do. The buffer mm -hmm. and the waxer yeah. and the mm -hmm. and plier. And, and a, a guy, I grew up in that business, I'm sorry, but... Mm -hmm. If you give a buffer to someone who doesn't know how to operate it, you oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right through the wall. So then we need I a drywaller. We need a painter. Exactly. It seems it seems easy. Um, it's not. But I've <laughs> made more than one joke by giving somebody the uh, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Joe. And the drain cleaning isn't yes. isn't that something that we can do in house? It's really not. Uh, it's a, we, we do our own we do our own catch base cleaning and stuff. It's basically it's the same thing, right? Um, you're taking you're taking the the soil. You're taking whatever sand and all that. We're doing the same thing with catch basins. It, it, catch basin they usually have the trap and they have the cleaner, right? right? This is this is we're talking about a six inch wide trench. Yeah. That's to a depth. Uh, we have a trap underneath. Yeah. So I don't know that that they have the equipment to do that appropriately. I haven't <laughs> investigated. I certainly haven't talked to DBW. It said to be environmental because it's required by the EPA to have it. Yeah. So we have to actually treat the wastewater treatment. Mm. So what's the difference with our catch basins? Catch basins are not considered to be environmental. <laughs> <the reason. laughs> wow. Great. End discussion. They have different rules. That yeah. drives us crazy. That's, why I'm, that's just why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we do our own catch basins, so it's kind of the same thing. That's also for the ducts. So oh, um, you read ducks. Oh, I understand ducks. that. Yep. yep. And and oh. Lieutenant <laughs> Gannon <laughs> had, <laughs> had previously done that. Now it's Lieutenant Brilli doing building maintenance. And um, the duct maintenance that was performed, uh, if you would have seen what was living up in there for a little while, oh, I, and now it's just <laughs> we're a lot better off without it. Okay. I just a drain clean. That's to me it's the same thing. Sure. You know, catch basin, catch basin. Sunny. Jim. All set. Nothing. Brian. <coughs> HVAC service, $8,000. That's new this year. It is. Um, with the new construction, we've had the installation of air handling units on the Winnicunnet Road side. We have an air handler that deals with um, the environment for the entire um, new wing, let's call it. Um, for the beach, we have uh, an air conditioner that deals with upstairs. We have modine heaters for the downstairs apparatus bay floors. Um, there's a significant volume that we're dealing with here. It's not just 10,000 square feet. If you go to the beach station, you'll see on the apparatus bay floor, we're dealing with significant volume that needs to be heated and cooled. Um, the HVAC systems for the offices, they operate on a tolerance that's so minuscule. Our administrative assistant complains all the time because I like it down at... 69 and she likes it at 71 well it's controlled between 69 and 71 that's it and it's that small range so um this air handling system is for all of that and that's part of the part of the new construction is that eight thousand a year that we're going to expect uh i believe the maintenance part of that 
will be included in there. But we don't have, we don't know. We just, we've only been in there a year, so I can't tell you trends yet. But we still, we put eight thousand dollars in there. I mean, what? What are we going to do? I, I don't have those figures. I can certainly research it and get back to you. What it cost us for HVAC for the last year? Because it just seems like some of these cost the buildings after we got them built. Mm -hmm. We've got to add yeah. this stuff in there, and I don't understand where the well, eight thousand dollars is going. The if uh, it's been planned or if it's something's broken already. No, um, we had a situation where there was. Um, a misinstallation of a sensor, and that was kind of interesting. Um, Ekman Construction, again, I, I referenced them, and we had numerous contractors in. They found the problem, identified it after a couple of days to watch them try to figure it out. This is a very complex system. The envelope was built extremely tight, and so they need to move a certain amount of air. So this, this design and that money is based on a projection on what it's going to cost to run. But Who projected I, this, um, Chief Silva. Okay. Um, overhead door service and repair. That one just kind of just hits me. I don't know why. <coughs> why? They yeah, just frequently. always just put it in there. They're up and down yeah. all day long. Right. I understand all that part, but I'm just saying this is just a continuous. Yep, yeah. accidents Always happen. Been, I know they, I'm going back know, to 2012. Sure, exactly right. Um, these are these are used 24/7, 365, um, up and down, up and down, and they're they're spring, they're spring uh, loaded doors. Hmm. They are the springs snap. Yep. Yeah, as far as preventative maintenance, we have to have that done. Um, accidents do happen, and a panel might get bent, so we'll have to repair that. Um, we have had issues where the electronic eyes have failed. We've had issues where glass has been broken. So that's why that line number is there. That's why. Thank you. I'm all set. I'm all set. All set. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> this uh, particular line, 4220.8, fire stations and buildings, is up 53%. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be driven by. Three subline items. One was electricity at 62.6 percent, building maintenance of 42 percent, and uh, the big one that confuses me is water, 600.73 percent. Mm -hmm. Well, he explained. Now, he explained. Mm -hmm. He talked about water, but I didn't understand. Uh, 600 percent. 20,000 square feet on between the two buildings, and he added about double the bathrooms. Double bathrooms, and then we also added two six-inch lines for sprinklers. Mm -hmm. The charges you for. If you have a sprinkler, sprinkler system in your house or in a station, they charge you for that sprinkler system every single month, even though you don't use it. And the water sits there and does nothing, but they charge you for having the ability to use it should it be necessary. Yep, kind of like the what's, hydrant. Charge. What's the cost? Standby charge. Right. What's mm -hmm. the cost for that standby charge? I don't have those figures, but I'll give them. I'll give back to you. It's, it's I mean, it's, yeah. it's big. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought they were making their money off me. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're making it off the town, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> this 600%, yeah. all right, there's got to be a main driver to it. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. What is the main the biggest driver? biggest chunk of change Where are you? is probably the, the two uh, six inch sprinkler fire lines, sprinkler mm -hmm. lines. Sprinkler systems. Yeah. You know, so. I just want to throw something in there. I don't have the budget from 2013. Um, in its entirety. We only have the actual in the book. Right. But the number doesn't seem right. That you would have had use in 2013 of, of $5,000, $5,100 basically. And then the 2014 budget would have had thirteen seventy. You gave it a $4,000 shortfall right off the bat. Hmm. So yeah, you're at 600%, but that based on the actual of 2013 is only is less than doubled. I'm just right. doing That's a rough point. numbers. Six hundred percent is good the actual for water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking yeah. at if you just run it across yeah. and I don't I have that. I don't have the twenty thirteen um, the budgeted amount. The, the actual for water in twenty twelve was only nineteen hundred dollars. Right. 
and I, I think my, what ha might have happened there is that, did we have a default budget and that somehow maybe that line got adjusted? No, we're talking actuals, Jerry. Actual for two, no, 2012 saying, was 1464. Mm -hmm. You weren't being billed for the beach fire station for water. Oh, oh, that's a different okay. thing. Is that what it was? Yeah. 2012. Who was? Um, uh, all I'm trying to point out is no that based on the there. use that we right. had, the actual use in okay. 2013, we haven't gone up 600%. It's 50%. Right. Well, well, it's up six hundred percent from what, because it's reflecting what was budgeted. Right. Fourteen. But so. the, yeah. the, if you're using, I don't care what it is across the board on any line, if you have a use of five thousand dollars, to use a budget amount of thirteen hundred, you deficit spending right off the bat. It's not a responsible number, the 1300 if, no. you, if you use mm. 5100 Right. Mm. That's all I'm getting at. And I realize it's a default budget. The numbers are crazy all over the place. But I want to go back to actual use yeah. from well, where we were in actual use, not a, not a, a budget or a, a maneuvered budget or a default <coughs> budget or anything else, but an actual use and where we need to be, and that's not 600%. You, Madam Chair, I, 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 I do catch your point. It's well taken. 600% represents the increase over the budgeted amount. Right. But if you were to annualize the I actuals, annualize it, and it's 10689 Then that 600% goes down quite radically. Right. That's why I didn't make and so that's that. probably the biggest driver. And then secondarily, it's that the, the increase but in the, the actuals is a result of right. the sprinkles. Mm -hmm. The oh, sprinkle yeah. system charge right. that uh, that uh, the Aquarian oh, charges us. Mm -hmm. right. and they have water right. sitting pipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing nothing, <laughs> just waiting. What was the term you used, Fred? It's a readiness to serve charge. Uh, what is it? Readiness to serve Readiness. Charge. Mm -hmm. Chrissy, could you tell us what that is sometime? Let us know water. what that is. Those charges are there just for curiosity's sake. You know, in my kids we don't pay for in the in the stations is the um, mm -hmm. one line I think that fills the, the yeah. water tanks on the engines, which is also used during wash. Right. Which is also used during vehicle wash. Right. I, I would assume, you know, like my kitchen sink, I have this faucet. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't have to pay a readiness to use charge to use it. No, you're not well, a commercial. But a quarry in the Well, even if I were commercial, I still wouldn't, right? <laughs> I might pay commercial rates, but I wouldn't pay a readiness to use charge. Well, mm -hmm. So I assume the readiness to, to use charge is to guarantee <coughs> that the sprinkler system will have priority over all other water demands. No. Okay. It's Bad a assumption. separate intake main that comes into the building right. off the main main out in the street. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? And it's dedicated strictly to the sprinklers. So it, it's not going to interfere with anything else. Okay. It's just going to operate those should the demand be required. Mm -hmm. and, and the loose terminology of rate structures is called a readiness to serve charge. Uh, it's kind of like the stranded cost for electric utility. Yeah, industries. our electric bills the same way. So it sounds like two charges. It yeah. sounds like this is a means for, for the them to yeah. recapture yeah. the cost right. of that separate pipe. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a means for doing recapture, and then it's well, it's profits, uh, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a method to increase profits. Well, mm -hmm. yes, of course, yeah. Yes. But I mean, the rationale is to recapture the capitalization of the right. new pipe. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that education. And we do not get charged from Aquarian for hydrant water, though, right? If there's a fire, if That's there's a fire, we do no. not. If there is a, if there is some something that we have to do, and we back our vehicles back into the fire station, we fill on a similar line. We also wash our vehicles on a similar line. Oh, yeah. That is not going through the meter. That is an understanding between us and Aquarian, which goes Damn back nice to Hampton thing. Water days. So. so we need to all bring our water buckets down there and fill there them up. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my God knows. Mr. Pierce, it's needed for you, sir. But <laughs> 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 well, we do get charged for fire hydrants themselves. Well, hydrants themselves, so, so, but that's, not for the use of water. That's a separate section if yeah, we ever right. get through this one. We get charged yeah. early for that. We already did that. 200,000. All right. No, we already no, did 400,000. Len, do you have any questions? Nope. Yeah. Thank you, no Madam Chair. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We already did hydrants. Okay. Okay. Are we ready to finalize the vote on this one? Yes. All right. Yes. All those in favor? Unanimous. That's it. Okay. I'm unanimous. I'm more fire department. You abstain? I'm more fire. Okay.
We didn't change any of these. All right, now we're doing the total? Right. Yep. Now we're doing the total. All right, total fire department, three million five hundred fifteen thousand three hundred and seven three hundred seventeen dollars. Second. All those I have a question on this uh, bottom line. On the total? Of Was that course you what's know. that bottom line? Three five fifteen three one seven. Page eighty three, Jerry. Page eighty three. Okay. To the book. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not the same total as over on the other page. No, because there were changes made, yeah, so don't, don't do the to remember, don't do the yep. totals on the right-hand page. Do the totals on the left-hand page. Right. Very good. This means... Um, 3,550,317, three that's what Jim said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the number. You had a question on the total? Yeah, as well, in terms of what one of the things that comprise the total. Uh, under the administration, under regular wages, we've got a budget for... Um, two hundred and twenty-one thousand one hundred and one dollars. Mm -hmm. um, this is these are non-union wages, right? No administration. We have several. The only <coughs> position that's non-union, not covered by a collective bargaining agreement, is the fire chief position. The deputy chiefs, the captains. I'm um, sorry, the deputy chief, the EMS officer, and the fire prevention officer um, are all covered. Okay, so in, under regular wages, they're all union except for the fire chief. Correct. And do we know what the fire chief's wage is? So I can then calculate what the non-union, or what the union wages are. The fire chief's wage, I do believe, was 95000 and change. So a little more than half of this is actually union. It was very and that's yeah. the 1.69 percent is all ZBA, CBA, okay, or union contract. That's correct. Thank you. I just have a quick point of order. Do we need to do anything with cost transfer because it is in the budget, although there's nothing there? Cost transfer? It's on page 81. The there's no the figures. What do we do? <laughs> no. No. I'm just That's asking it. if we need to do no. something. No. Okay. Thank you. We're ready to Not vote. here. Okay. I think we're ready to vote now. All those in favor? Opposed? Yep. Two? Yeah. And any abstentions? <coughs> I think before everybody runs away, we have fire hydrants to 89. Page 89. I got a big figure. Yeah, that's absurd. Page number, Chris. 89 hydrants. Oh, boy. Well, you said it was 200,000, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I was million. thinking the lights. He <laughs> was only looking out of one eye. I'm owed $486,904. Oh. Just a brief explanation. I want that one removed that's in the middle of the marsh out in the... Half a million bucks for hydrants of set. We don't charge us it's for It's ridiculous. Oh. The hydrants aren't part of the fire department. They're no. part of aquarium water. So we are uh, we are privileged to have such service. I know that um, they do a great job of maintaining. When we have had fires historically, if we've had a problem, they've been called out and dealt with them. Um, I'm not sure what else I can give you on that. That increase of 2.38 percent is from them totally. Uh, I don't believe that it's from us at all. Fred? Okay. Uh, that's that's from Aquarian. Right. Uh, you'll notice mm -hmm. that the uh, <clears throat> the requested sum is five oh six five seventy seven. Mm -hmm. What happened here was that they realized they returned from an audit by the IRS, <laughs> uh, and what they they opted to do was to apply that return to these funds that were, are being billed out for hydrogen <coughs> service in the town. We get annual rate increases. Therefore, ready. Therefore, um, I can't remember the initial for the, uh, for the uh, system. But what happens here is they make changes and repairs, and they petition the Public Utilities Commission every year and give them a, a, a run sheet of what they've done for repairs to the system. They're allowed to jack on a certain percentage every single year. So this money that's coming off between the 486 and the 506 is a discount of that, am uh, that amount of money on that rate. Mm -hmm. In two years, that's going to come back with two additional years worth of 2% each year on top of that. 
Okay, so you, you, you haven't eliminated uh, the two percent that was here. Mm -hmm. You're simply going to get it a couple of years from now on top of two more years of two percent. And then you're going to have a regular general rate increase, which they do every three years. So yeah, they keep they keep records, Fred, based on the repair. Yeah, they do. A maintenance of these. Yep. And that's why they justify what they have here. Well, this is the system the Public Utilities Commission set up. It's not a matter of them justifying it. It's a matter of them filing the report, and it's automatically granted. <coughs> yeah. is, is that Wicca? Fred, do we have any Wicca, idea? Fred? It's Wicca. That's Wicca. it. Wicca. 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 Do we have any idea how many billions of dollars this has cost the town over? Women, infants, children. Well, I say billions, but. Uh, <laughs> well, that was uh, facetious. I suppose but 1917 dollars is billions. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. How many hydrants are there? We, we figured that over a. Uh, yeah. 300 over a 20 year period every 20 every 15 to 20 years the rate will double <coughs> okay so we'll be up above if, a million they, in 20 years at their a accusation that every three years they're going to have only a 10 percent rate increase they've been averaging better than 20 percent cost rate accelerator the last three yes yeah, so, so they're almost 100 yeah. percent in less than 10 years and how they get away with <laughs> this is the utilities commission just stamps it. Yeah, but I mean, yep. do we ever Thank ask? You. Do we ever ask? Do we ever records and, and to see what kind of maintenance is really going on with these hydrants? And, do, and if, if, if if we don't feel comfortable with that, we could petition the utilities. We could we could argue it. We could we could do something besides just laying back and taking the bills every year. We go every year to the hearings. Every year we raise objections. Every year we look at the the, the paperwork. Every year we raise questions. And what usually happens is when we go down there to testify, the Public Utilities Commission won't let us testify. They just grant <laughs> Jerry, so. before we take on the world, and can we pass this is amount? Shovel. Yeah. Madam, <laughs> Chair, All right. Madam Chair, the before we pass that yeah. amount. Our Treasury is shovel ready for them. I mean, I look at it, this amount, we can't do anything about it. No, we're right. dead in the water with this. At one, the moment. One question, if I might. Yeah. So. But this is the one question. I heard the acronym WICA thrown out. Does anyone know what WICA means? A lot of money. I think it's probably, an acronym, <laughs> probably an acronym for wicked rates, but uh, yeah. Uh, the closest thing that came to my mind was a water <coughs> uh, in, in infrastructure <coughs> cost <coughs> accelerator. Well, but I don't find it, it is close, close enough. Accelerator close enough. Yeah, does <laughs> take <laughs> care of all the new improvements <laughs> they do to the system. So. So that would be a reasonable one until the real one comes to, to light. I guess. I suppose you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all those, all those in favor. Yeah. Under protest. Under protest. Mm -hmm. Under Wicca protest. Yes. All those opposed? I'm going to be against it too. But All right. Abstaining. And abstentions. I'm abstaining. This is just too sickening for me. See, instead of buying that clock up there in the wall for seventy seventy thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars, I should have bought the water system at the same price. <laughs> How'd you vote? Uh, I'm against. Oh. You're against it. Fred, are you saying we spent seventy thousand uh, dollars on that clock? No. That clock is what's left of the trolley system the town bought that lasted for three years before it went bankrupt. We had the town had to make a choice between buying the water system and buying the trolley system. They bought the trolley system three years later went bankrupt. That's what's left of it. That's worth eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> and I'm almost see, broken have can, twice. Have we completed <laughs> right. everything under the Yeah. Yes. Okay. Chief I ought to want to thank you very much for joining us tonight, as well as Captain Kennedy. Thank you very much yes, for the opportunity. Thank you. For joining us. Thank you for everything you do. Absolutely. Yes. Appreciate and everyone on the department. Yeah. Yes. I'll bring those sentiments back. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank, thank you. you. Let's go. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too, my friend. I didn't know. <laughs> Do we have anything else? Yeah, I hope not. Ten minutes to ten? No, we're not doing minutes. Uh, we're not going to do minutes tonight. Oh. Should I make a motion? Uh, so I want to make sure, before we make a motion, I want to make sure everybody knows where they're going to be next week and when they're going to be here. And before we leave, is there anybody who has not picked up their workbook yet from the school class. Ooh, yeah, it's some guilty. Yeah, quite a few. I was there right yesterday. Yeah. I have not. Oh, yeah. I'll be in tomorrow. I'm not picking them up for you, so I suggest you go get them. I'll get that tomorrow. Me too. So, right. Joe, would you Do pick up mine as well? I have a motion to adjourn. Jerry, I second. 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 What's your name? Motion yeah. second to adjourn. All those in favor? Good night, Chad. Good night, Dave. Yes, you grab my Good night, Bob.